coffee down. Hi everyone, I'm Timothy Von Rieden, better known as Von Art Online, and I am joined by my partner Joshua. Hello. And today we're gonna be doing a live stream study. Oops, I just spit on my paper. Oh no. And we're gonna be drawing a pair of hands, and it's gonna be a extended study period. It's not gonna be a bunch of broken up ones, but we are gonna do a 10 minute warm up followed by the 90 minutes study. So if you want to join along with me, you can find a link to the hand references below. And then I will do a mini critique at the end where you can submit them on the Discord and I'll bring them up live on the stream. So that is mostly what we're going to be doing today. If you have any comments or questions during it, just put at Bonart or at Schwa Plays Games and that way we can see it in between and Josh is going to act as our moderator so that I can stay focused on drawing the hands and we're going to have a good time. We're open to discussing basically anything, uh, but if you have specific questions about hands, I am more than happy to uh, answer them. And the only other, oh, I do have a few announcements actually. The emoji contest on Discord ends today, and I will be picking a few of them, not only for the Discord chat, but then one of them will be picked for the YouTube emojis that our members can use, because we have an empty slot and it's waiting to be filled. I also have my 300k giveaway drawing that we are going to go ahead and give live on the stream. I'm going to, I'm also going to be constantly reconnecting to my camera because it lags after like five, 10 minutes. So I, I found a way to fix it though, but I have to uh, keep tabs on it every five, 10 minutes. So here is the dark fairy that we actually started live on a live stream. Not last Saturday, this Saturday, was it last Saturday? I don't remember, but we did this live together concepting it. And then I, oh no, it was two Saturdays ago. And then I did a full pencil version of it. It's actually rather large compared to my normal drawing size. And we're gonna be giving it away for free uh, to celebrate my passing on Instagram. So if you wanna enter, you literally have like 30 more minutes. Cause then I think, or like 15 minutes because uh, once the 90 minute timer starts, I'm gonna have Josh pick the winner and then find it. Cause there are a lot of comments. So to find it might take a little while, but all you have to do is like and comment the post. Then. I have my Kickstarter coming out in two weeks. I'll give you guys a little preview of the card deck. I'm making a poker deck. And I've been working on these cards since uh, January. And I'm going to be making a full poker deck with all the face cards or having a original art on them. And two jokers and obviously the the back of the card. And Oh, was I? I was doing them all off screen. Oh, no. No, they're on screen. No, you're good. Yeah, you're <laughs> I was like, oh, great. Every single one I've been doing off screen. <laughs> And I'm going to be working on the Red Joker this Friday. So if you want to come watch me do that, you are more than welcome. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to pull up the timer. And for the warm-up session, if you guys want to basically just search Google or Pinterest, or whatever, to find hand references, we're going to do quick gestural hand uh, warm-ups because this these aren't supposed to be very detailed. Try to get in as many as you can and don't... Don't feel you have to focus on any details or the wrinkles. Focus more on the shapes, the forms, and that way when we get into the 90 minute, then you can really uh, dive into getting the shapes and forms down first, create a solid foundation, and then build the details on top of that. So yeah, you ready, Josh? I'm ready. Actually, can I borrow the mouse? That way I can do the timer for you. Oh, yeah, yes, 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 yes. I don't even need the mouse pad or, oh, that works. All right, you're tech to use. Okay. <laughs> okay Actually, you can use it on this thing, it works well. Surprisingly. Oh, yeah. All right. Okay. Are you guys ready to draw with me today? I'm gonna Tools work. at the ready? I'm going to work with a dull HP. <laughs> oh, wait. I need this, though, for Pinterest really quick. Mm -hmm. okay, I'm going to have these hands. I have this for you in case someone. Oh, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Here you go. I know, right? All right, you guys ready? So if you want to grab your pencils, your digital, um, I guess, stylus, or your paintbrush, whatever you're working with today, let's go ahead and get started in three, two, one, go. Now, Josh will give us a warning of when the um, five minute, two minute, and then like final 30 seconds are. Hmm. Oh, Jim, welcome back. Hey, Jim. Good to see you. My Lord of the Rings recommendation. Your what? Um, he was on the recommended, the artist that does the Lord of the Rings. Oh, yes, yeah. yes, yes. 
Well, welcome back, Jim. <laughs> Belly Mouth says, evening both. I hope you had a wonderful, or a lovely bunny day. <laughs> Hi, Easter was great. great. Yeah, I mean, it was... Or you go. I mean, yeah, I mean, Bunny Day and Animal Crossing was great. <laughs> I know a lot of people were missing their families on Sunday, too. Um, if people, you know, tend to go see their families or friends, I know it was a little bit different for people this year. Yeah, I thought it was great. I know not only the Animal Crossing, but it was just a solid day. I have a note. Oh, there we go. It's like, I know I didn't know it with all the usernames. Oh yeah, if you yeah. have something you'd rather be called, let us know, and that way Josh can write it down, and we can call you by that preferred name. Zillion, hello, welcome. Dorothea, hello. Eric Ziva says, the virus has kind of effed up my living situation, so I was wondering if one can change the shipping address for your previous Kickstarter still. Because yeah, that's going to be the backer kit. Mm -hmm. So once once we actually have the books, we'll send out an email just confirming um, change of address. If you want to add something to your Kickstarter, take away from it. I know you can adjust like what you're getting even. Um, so yeah, that'll come out once we have the books. So no worries if your address changed. We'll make sure we get it to you. Yeah. Barbara says the drawings are so magnificent. The shading is so beautiful. On what? The drawings are so magnificent. The shading. Are so beautiful. Oh, well, thank you. I don't know what you're referencing, though. <laughs> it could have been your little hand was on the screen, or the cards even, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited to get that all squared away and make a deck out of it. Um, <clears throat> oh, Sasha, which hands are we drawing? Where can we find the reference he's looking at? Um, so right now, Tim's just doing a warm-up. So you can just find mm -hmm. hands anywhere. Yeah, honestly, Google search, Pinterest, wherever you you know, normally go for your reference images or your own hand if you want to. And uh, these are meant to be really quick. Don't focus too much on the details. Focus on the shapes and the forms. And then the one that we will be drawing together is on our Discord channel that you can find below. And it is under the stream, I think it's follow along uh, channel it's called. And I, I posted the hands on there. Oh, Simon says, I'm not going to draw hands, but I will work on my drawing because I want to try to post it today. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you for joining us. <laughs> it's fun just to, like, all hang out together. So even if you're not doing the hands, I'm just happy everyone's here. <laughs> Tidjil, I'm not an expert, but it might be difficult to play cards with those. They're a tad big. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I really do want to make a wumble size deck. I was, <laughs> I was told I should wait to uh, make them happen, but I do want to make a card deck that the cards are really, really big. Because the place that I'm getting the cards made can actually do it. Uh, but I figured for the Kickstarter, we'll keep it just to the, the deck. And Aren't they bigger than the ones you just showed, even? No, no, no. They're, They're actually a little size. smaller than oh. those. Can you imagine that they were like just massive? <laughs> <laughs> like uh, Alice in Wonderland. I mean, I wouldn't... I would be fine with that. I don't know if there's much of a market for it, oh but God. I would want to make we it. We could make our garden fence just giant playing cards. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jim. Uh, Jim, also, I forgot the order in the sky, did a book called Fairies with Brian Froud from Dark Crystal. Mm. Oh, all these things. Yeah, Froud is great. I mean, I did just get that stimulus check, so... No. <laughs> I'm teaching Josh how to save money. <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> in my world, if you have money in your account, and you already paid all your bills, and you paid your rent, and you paid for food, then the rest is just fair game. <laughs> That's not how it works, according to Tim. <laughs> no. You gotta save money to make money. <laughs> Um, Sasha, will there be a critique later? Yes. Yeah, so we'll be giving a short critique on the 90-minute hands if you want to post them. I mean, if you want to post your warm-up drawings as well, uh, feel free and I'll give a look at those too, but I'll be pulling up the 90-minute studies. <laughs> Cecilia, fast, so fast. If you're talking about drawing hands, he definitely has drawn a lot of hands. I was gonna say, this isn't my first rodeo. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I've drawn one or two hands before. <laughs> I mean, for me, hands are such a, a fun comfort zone. I mean, they're not always perfect, admittedly, and I have to change the proportions, and uh, I can't just assume that every hand I draw is going to be perfect, so I like using references, and I like doing studies like this, because it, it helps me to stay sharp and uh, keep my skills sharp. But yeah, hands are, I'm very comfortable drawing them. <laughs> Eric Ziva says, considering, and I'm so sorry, I missed the five minute mark. We are oh. at three minutes, 50 ah. seconds. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Eric Ziva says, considering getting some cards for my family, but then I remember that my mother abuses cards when she shuffles <laughs> them. <laughs> oh, is she a hard shuffler? I honestly wish I could do the bridge shuffle. I can't. I can do the first part, but I can't quite do the secondary one yet. Yeah, I don't. I just do the the one that you do too, where you just shuffle them down. Yeah. Which I do think probably bends them over time a lot more. But I mean, the in you know, like people have asked me, they're they're telling me, oh, I'm just gonna buy it and I'll you know it'll be like that pristine deck that's never used. But, but I'm kind of like I kind of want you to use it. Like, I don't want it just sitting on a shelf never played with. So I don't mind if they get a little roughed up around the edges. Because then at least I know they're being played with, which is half the point of me making <laughs> the card deck. I will say, though, and this might be a last-minute decision, the cards will not be red and black. So I was going to make a little mock tutorial on how to make the my my poker deck more playable, quote-unquote. So I was literally going to take like a red Sharpie and fill in all the hearts and diamonds. Because right now, it's a white and black deck. It's a very contrast graphite-only deck. And I didn't want to add red just to add red. So it, it is going to be more of a collector's deck, but if you want to play speed games with it, I would recommend placing red on the areas that uh, should have red in them. Tim says those cards on a wallpaper size. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be good. Are you talking like a phone wallpaper? Because actually those would be good phone wallpapers even too. Oh, that's not a bad yeah. idea. Actually, I might give those away to all my patrons then. That actually would look really good. Yeah, because they're they're kind of that longer size anyways. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah Barra, I'm trying to draw hands while animating a pop-up for work. This is not very productive. <laughs> Do a pop-up just full of hands. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I saw, Sarah, have you posted your pop-ups on the Discord? Because I'd love to see those. Like, now that I know what those are, too, I love that. Oh, okay, we got a minute and 20 left. Yeah, we're almost at the minute mark. Let's see here, I'm going to draw this hand. <laughs> Fem says I'll just buy two, one for using and one for admiring from <laughs> afar. <laughs> I mean, that would work. <laughs> and I'm, I mean, these cards aren't going to be that expensive anyway, so it's not that much of a breaking the bank scenario. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people are curious because I know a lot of my friends are to do, how will a Kickstarter do amongst this chaos with COVID right now? And for me, I wanted to make these card decks regardless, so it's not so much about the money as it is just getting it done. Because now that we postponed getting our exterior work done that we were going to do on the house, I'm not in a huge rush to make money. I just want to make the card deck so I can move on to the next project. The timer, I didn't even realize it was cropped off. I think, because if, if it does it over there, it doesn't like crop onto the screen. Oh, it's still not but working though. Fix that. I, yeah, I actually could have cropped in there. Oh, did you I, resize it? Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. Anyways, we have 10 seconds left. <laughs> ah! Oh my god. Oh my gosh. Alright, let me get this timer fixed though. Okay. Right. So as Josh is fixing the timer, if you want to take a little screenshot of what your hand warm-ups look like and post them in the Discord, and then we will go ahead... Actually, we're going to pick the 300k giveaway winner first, and then we'll go ahead and start our 90-minute study. Also, thank you, Fem, for letting me know about this. 
I totally was not even paying attention to that screen. I have to change that size too. <clears throat> and I would post my own, but currently my phone is being used as the video camera, so I have to wait a little bit. You want to do crap right? Yeah. And just get it probably lower. No, like a thousand. A thousand two hundred. Yeah, that works. Let's try like 15. There we go. Beautiful. Okay. Okay, so here, oh, you know what? I am way delayed. I'm going to have the third hand syndrome again. I'll just keep doing that. Yeah, it's like every five minutes. Yeah, I'm just, okay. Okay, so now we're going to be picking the uh, 300K giveaway drawing. So for those of you who came specifically just for that, Sorry, you had to wait a little bit. So let's go ahead and, where's the mouse? There it is. Okay, so the way that we're gonna do this, let's do the random number generator. So let's see how many comments, oh, I can't use my phone. I, I got my it. phone. Because <laughs> I think there were 600 and something. And I'll point my camera at the screen so you can see I'm not just picking one biasedly. <laughs> I'll move this down. Okay. We okay, have 672. Okay. Granted, some of those are your replies. Do you no, I don't reply to these except for I replied to Jet. Okay. Usually though I don't reply. Okay, so we got 672. So you guys ready? So the winner is number, well we won't know who it is until <laughs> Josh finds them. Hopefully it's not a really high one and you don't have to be searching forever. Oh, 183. That's not that bad. Okay. I've had like 400 something before. All right. So the easiest way to do it is be like one, two, three, four, five. Yes, so I can count. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. <laughs> Well, sometimes if you press on one, oh, it could like screw it up. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll get. I'll start counting once we're. Hang on. One eighty-three. Yes. Okay. One eighty-three. Okay. Three. One eighty-three. Just writing that down just so I have that. I'll be situated. Yeah, I'll this start over here. counting when we start the ninety minutes. So I'm gonna <laughs> switch onto some gooder paper. Gooder. Some better paper. Because I don't like working with uh, warm-up paper to do a real drawing, just because I don't like that it scrunches. And mixed media paper, I use Strathmore, so it's a, a thicker and it has more of a um, tolerance for me pushing and pushing around the graphite. I'm gonna pull up the drawing for myself on the screen. Oh yeah, Candor, can we have a pee break before we do the drawing? Oh yes, yes. if you need to go to the bathroom, do it right now. This is a perfect. <laughs> we'll start in about two minutes. So go, go get your stuff done. <laughs> get this timer fixed now because we have a little longer time. And whenever I draw something, uh, everyone kind of has their own. Oh yeah, everyone has their own way of working. But the way I would recommend is starting light. So I'm going to be working with a two H pencil. And then I'll eventually switch to an HB. And then I might pull out like a 3B to punch in the darker values. But I will be doing some of the detail edging with my 0.2 mechanical pencil. But that is also a HB inside of that. I don't think I'll be working with a blending stump today. I, I normally don't. I like to have my texture be seen. I don't like when things are too smooth. Not that it's not uh, great because I've seen some amazing artists work with a blending stump. But for me, I personally like showing the texture in my shading and in my gradations. <laughs> what? Tim's tip. If you want to count, just do <laughs> one, two, three. That is a Tim tip. That's a Tim tip. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta shut them down. <laughs> <laughs> there was oh a, I had, there was something recent that, oh, what was it? I was scrolling on Instagram and something, there was a post about 
oh, uh, how to fix feeling hungry. And I was like, you just eat. <laughs> I was like, my tip for not feeling hungry oh. would be to eat. <laughs> Sometimes I like Tim's black and white when it comes to like... I know. It's a, it's a fun world to live in. <laughs> Things become very easy to decipher if I want to do it, if I don't, if I like something, if I don't like it. Well, I think that's why people come to you for advice a lot, because I feel like you do give very practical, very kind of what people almost want to hear, but they don't want to admit it. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, are you ready? Um, yeah, I'm going to get ready to count 183 things. Let's see if there's anything beforehand. So then, <laughs> could you give us, let's see, we'll have a 60 minute, 30... Let's do 15 and then 5 and 1. You do good. <laughs> I, I, I actually need these reminders, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this I do need. <laughs> okay, is everyone all done peeing? You got your pencils or your pens or your paintbrushes or your uh, tablet pens, whatever it might be. Let's go ahead and get started soon. I'm so excited to have all these drawings in my hands. Yeah, so if you haven't guessed it, uh, these are Josh's piano spider fingers <laughs> that we're going to be drawing today. My nails are a little nasty right now, but I just colored my hair too, so there's probably some like hair gunk in them too. Oh, I should say, before we get started on the hands, if you guys are going to be drawing along with me, as you're looking at the hands, I know next time we do studies, I should have done this beforehand, we'll take a picture on a white background, because in this case, the background has a darker value than the hands that we're going to be drawing. So I'm going to be personally adding some dark gradation around the hands. You can do whatever you want for the background. If you just want to draw the hands and leave the background blank, that's fine. But really focus on the light in the shadows because the way that this picture was taken, there's a lot of light coming from the top and that's where I want to show the difference between uh, areas that are in light and areas that are in shadow. So this will be a fun challenge for both of us to do if you want to draw hands. All right. Okay. Ready. All right, five, four, three, <laughs> two, and one. Okay, so as I'm going to start off these hands, I'm going to do very loose shapes because since I know this is going to, I have more time to work on this, I really want a good foundation first because I know I can uh, kick ass when I start doing the rendering part, but that's also my biggest comfort zone. So I don't want to skip the part that isn't my favorite, which is doing all the line art in, or not necessarily even the line art, but making sure the proportions are all correct. This is more of like the work part of doing art, where rendering is, for me at least, more fun. Has uh, the references, you can actually, I, I will link it in chat too, but there's a Discord link below. You're going to hop in the Discord, and then there's a channel in there called Stream <coughs> Follow Along, mm -hmm. and the reference pictures will be in there for you then. And I will post the link in chat again, too. <laughs> oh, I am so sorry. Oh, you're back here. I'm sorry. I will swing in sometimes. <laughs> um, Drea says, how do you get your nails to grow so long? Any tips? Uh, my friend told me, and I do it like once a week, but the top coat, like when you paint your nails and you do top coat, I just put the top coat on my nails sometimes and it keeps them pretty like solid because otherwise they will chip once they're at this length right now I have them at. I'm surprised they're all hanging in because usually they start chipping at this point. Oh, oh. Should I move this over? Just yeah, so. actually that's right there. Thank you, Jackie Bella, for subscribing. I can give one little bell ring. <laughs> I mean, I technically we should to... reserve that for members, but... I do one, try to do one ring for subscribers. <laughs> I should get like a littler bell for subscribers. Oh, that'd be cute. Uh, but what... Just have like a bell for everything. Donation Literally the... bell. Uh... I mean, that'd be cute. Yeah. The tip for how do you grow your nails so long? Tim <laughs> tips. Don't cut them. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, but that's that's the first step. It's don't cut them, <laughs> but then you use top coat. Um, oh, Sammy says I'm so jealous of long spider hands for piano. Mine are quite small. Um, yeah, I played when I was younger, so I think that's why they kind of came like this. Granted, the nails are not great for playing piano, so my piano teacher used to yell at me for my nails. Um, I liked her, my piano teacher, a lot, but she would definitely like 
come after me for having the nails too. She'd come in and like that would be the first thing she'd look at. She'd be like, you didn't cut them again. <laughs> <laughs> um, and she kind of made it more of a hygiene issue even too. And I'm like, I like long nails though. But it is hard to play piano with the nails because you're constantly like, you hear the clicky sound when you slide on the, mm -hmm. on the key. Uh, Kandor says my nails grow. Oh, oh what? Thank Renan. you. Yes, thank you so much. One little. Thank you, Renan. <laughs> um, Kandor says my nails grow uncontrollably long. I do nothing but they are growing constantly. Maybe because we share the same birthday, Kandor. We just have the same thing with our nails. <laughs> June nineteenth is the day for nails. <laughs> oh, Luna, welcome. Hello, hello. I showed hello, up just Luna. in time. Right, actually, yeah, the timer, we're only four minutes into the, the drawing, so you're totally good. Yeah, originally, I made my fingers way too long. So if you notice while you're doing this that your proportions are a little off, now's the time to fix it, because if we're already into the stage where we're rendering, you don't want to be rendering proportions that are wrong. Like This is the time to fix it, and even I want to show even with my own how... I will edit and I will adjust and I will erase if necessary at this stage. And that's totally okay. Oh, Tijol. Tijol posted his hands in the Discord too. Oh yeah, you have really long nails, Tijol. Yours are longer than mine right now, I think. Oh yeah. Actually, you have a nice, because mine sometimes get weird. What do they call that? Like the white part of the nail? Do you know what, like, what's I don't name? actually. Because mine sometimes get uneven too. It's weird. Oh yeah, yours kind of like loops down. Yeah, I hope they're really odd. Yours are like nice and... Nice and straight. <laughs> Femme, how to get long nails? Don't cut them off. Tim, just what I thought. I actually don't do anything to them. <laughs> how are do you you do you bite your nails a lot, right? I know you're a biter. Well, I cut them, but if I ever am nervous, I'll bite them. Yeah. But I honestly I don't do it too often. But yeah, I like shorter nails. Well, for obvious, I'm drawing all the time. So if I have nails, there's a habit where I could scratch it. Oh, I'm doing it on the cardboard, or on the... Oh, I thought you were doing that on the paper. I'm like, I didn't Oh, no. <laughs> but I have to be a little careful, because um, I don't like it. it. Especially, you remember my whole thing about why I don't paint my nails? Because it will rub on the paper, and it will ruin my drawing completely. <laughs> and it's happened once before. And then Kat, she didn't believe me, and then she was handling my prints, and she had red nail polish on, and then I was signing them, oh, and yeah, I realized I there was red streaks on a couple of them. I was like, cat, is what I mean. It happened to me then once, too, and I was packaging them, because I didn't believe it either. I thought cat had some weird nail polish on, I was like, it's probably cat's nail polish, not mine. Nope. And then my, my nail polish got all over it, too. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of weird where I don't like anything. On, like, I was telling Josh, I don't like jewelry... I like jewelry, I like it on other people, but I don't like wearing it myself. And I don't like the feeling of uh, having it around my neck, or on my fingers, and then same with fingernail polish. I don't like having that on my nails. Oh gosh, yeah. I like, no, I like having but it. But I like the look of it though. Like I think it's cool, for sure. I think that's why I'm worried, I'm thinking about getting an earring or getting my ear pierced, and I'm nervous that the same thing is going to happen where I hate the feeling of it, and I'm just going to let it close up. But I gotta at least try it. Never know until you try it. Yeah. You gotta try growing them out sometimes. That'd be fun. My nails? Yeah. No. God, no. <laughs> Can't wear that birthday thing. Must be it. It is the birthday. And actually, I just learned Tigel's birthday is a day before mine. So Tigel's like... What? Yeah. We're all... Candor, Tigel, and I have like our birthdays like right all together. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, I think... Yeah, T Tigel, you're like a day before mine, right? Yeah, that's super crazy. <laughs> oh, well, thank you, May. Oh, er, Mayeru? Mayeru. Come in, hello. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I definitely need a different bell for subscribers. Um, the cowbell's got to be reserved, you know? That's like a, that's a joyous occasion when the cowbell rings. Um, Kandor says, oh, hi, Whitney. Hello, hello. Um, Kandor says that looping down can be liver issues or lack of certain minerals like iron. I have a lack of iron and they do curl a bit too. Yeah, I wonder. I mean, that could be it. Yeah, that would make sense. We really should go get, especially since I'm vegan now, I should just get the, the checkup on my blood and stuff just to make sure I'm... I think vegetables I don't eat enough of, so I'm probably not getting 
those nutrients in as much as I should be right now. <laughs> yeah. So I don't think you're getting the nutrients on here. Potato I, chips and burrito. I think I yeah probably ever really been getting the right amount of nutrients. <laughs> <laughs> I just like chips too much. I think when I first met you, I was surprised at how bad your diet was. Yeah. Considering how little you are, I'm like I don't know how you're not huge. Oh yeah, I mean because when Tim met me, I wasn't vegan yet, but I was like a fast food person all the time. Thankfully, I'm not fast food much anymore, but I, yeah, I would have fast food every day. It's not good. Mm -mm. Adria says, I pick up my nails. I don't like things under them. Or if there's a rough edge, next next thing I know, they're gone. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, that's, I find myself cleaning under them a lot, especially, like, doing dishes and stuff. I, you tend to get stuff, like, just gunked under them, so I'm always cleaning them out. But, um... I know the rough edges, yeah. That's usually what happens when I chip one because it gets caught on something and then it's it's game over. Like actually right now I have a little why is it in the picture? There's a little cut in my thumb right now. My thumbnail has a little hmm. Okay, so now I'm at the point where I'm sure maybe some of you guys are at where I have the rough outline. So I'm gonna go through and edit some of the proportions where it needs to be pushed or pulled because these are definitely very posed hands and there's a lot of like pushing into the palm and you can see even with the, the forefinger on the left hand it's really digging into the palm so it's creating that crease so I want to make sure I'm getting that as well and I also want the hands to feel like a similar size, obviously, so that they uh, feel like they're part of the same uh, body. <laughs> um, Eric Ziva says Josh is getting hag fingers, and so he must steal due to my weekend. Yes, no, I want hag fingers, please. <laughs> I really want to have rough hands too one day. I, I doubt that, Schwa. <laughs> I don't know. So my grandma always had, she had like those really nice old people hands, you know what I mean? Where they're just, they're like sandpaper almost. And they make for really good back rubs. I just want my like back rub game to be really good when I'm old. <laughs> well, we all have dreams, I guess. Yes, <laughs> that's my dream. FN says, yes, I thought I was so weird. I have jewelry and nail polishes because I always thought it looked amazing, but I noticed I don't like to wear it myself. Yeah, that's definitely Tim. Mm -hmm. I feel like when you go out or like we do something or if we go to a club or something, you want you usually do it, but then you take it off pretty yeah, quickly. Yeah, take it off pretty yeah. quickly. Okay, uh, Tigil's birthday is a day after us, but Tigil is another Gemini. Oh, so you're crazy too. Nick, I apologize in advance for probably breaking your fingers, Josh. Yes. Break them as much as you want. Make them old hands. <laughs> Give me rough old person hands. So something that we talked about in the tutorial of drawing hands, and something that can be applied here is the top of the hands, you can see the webbing, but on the back, you really can't that much. So in the picture, you can see how the area on his left hand has this really good dip of webbing between his middle and forefinger, or pointer finger, and then a little bit of the webbing between the pinky and the ring finger. So definitely make sure to include that, and then with the other, his right hand, there isn't much webbing, and you just want to make sure you separate that pinky from the, the two middle fingers. I'll throw random little tips throughout uh, maybe give you guys a second look at what you're working on and um, does my advice actually, if, is it applicable to the stage that you're at and maybe you can do some edits. Luna says, I have what my stepdad calls needle fingers. They're long and spindly <laughs> with long sharp nails at the end. <laughs> I don't file my nails, they just grow out and I'm always scratching people. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's kind of cool. <laughs> like a cat nails that'd be pretty cool that's one thing too about long nails is you can sometimes just like accidentally 
slice someone. <laughs> and I kind of, I feel like I do that to you sometimes too, if I'm just like rubbing your back or something, or if I move my nail fast, I feel like I cut you sometimes. That scares me. I think it's never deep. It doesn't happen that often, but. <laughs> oh, the packages got picked up. That means your order is picked up, Candor. I will actually send you that tracking later too. <laughs> Tigel, I got I get judged in my nails a lot, but I don't really care. I like them, and they are always very clean, clearer than some short nailed people. Yeah. I clean them constantly. Yeah, no, Tigel, your nails are great. Actually, I think I need to go to you for advice, because <laughs> actually, mine in this picture too do not look good. I'm looking at them right now; they're not very clean. I mean, it's probably the hair dye though, because I never put gloves on when I do the hair dye stuff. Then have to like clean them out from my nails. <laughs> oh yeah, I could definitely be why. Oop, I'm trying to detail too much right now. So I'm at the stage where I'm going to start doing a value pass throughout. So I'm going to be looking at where the shadows and the light sources are and lay them out. This pencil, uh, the 2H doesn't get too dark. So I'm going to lay out some of the dark areas, but I'm going to wait until I use the the HB and then the 3B to really punch out my values. So just do a light pass if you're doing this kind of the same way that I'm working it. And I will be working on some of the background elements as well. So I'll just make it kind of a dark uh, gradation out. Oh, the birds are out. Oh, they sound really nice right now. Hmm. I like keeping the window open when I, I work in here. Oh, you know, I was looking. <clears throat> Hopefully, our weather gets better. I think we're still, yeah, it's only in the 30s. Yeah. Next week, we're going to in the 60s again, though. That would be nice. That would be so nice to get back outside and do gardening and stuff. <laughs> Tigel, I'm missing my thumb. Sometimes, if I chip one, I just shorten all of them because they need to be even. <laughs> I know, I usually like go a week with one shift and then I hit a point where I'm like, this just looks dumb. And I feel like you can focus too, like anytime you're out somewhere or at the store, you feel everyone sees that one shift nail. <laughs> I hyper focus on it whenever I'm handing my card or cash or something at a store. I'm like, they see that chip nail. Things I would never think about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sammy, I mean, the same way, if one breaks, they all have to go as well. <laughs> Oh, something I, I forgot to mention. Oh, I'm glad I'm remembering this right now. If you guys have uh, ideas for follow-along tutorial streams that you want to see, so I think next week I'm going to do a foot one, so like feet, because I think that's something that most people struggle with drawing with, and we'll have a... Next week might be the tutorial one. Eh. No, next week might be the, the 90 minute study too. I kind of like these to push ourselves, and then I think I can give more feedback in the critique part. Uh, and. If there is a specific subject matter that you want to see live and do a drawing with me, it could be something you know more strange like an iguana or something more specific like uh, the human anatomy and hands, feet, torso, arms, legs, whatever it might be. And I think we're just going to continue down this route for a little while every Wednesday where we're doing these kind of study streams. And then the one-offs will still be random. <laughs> but I figured I'd give you guys a chance to give me input on what you'd want to see. That way we can implement that on the Wednesdays. I saw a question, so I just want to get to the question. Oh, yes. While we're going, and then I'll get back to those other ones. Uh, Drea says, any advice for a foreshortened finder, like his right pointer? A foreshortened finger, sorry, like his right <laughs> pointer. Any advice for a foreshortened finger, like his right pointer? So his right pointer, so when I'm doing where it's facing the camera, you have to be very aware of how it's going to look because it can look like a super short nub. So to me, I would accentuate the wrinkles just a touch more maybe than they do in the drawing or in the photo because when you get kind of an awkward pose like that, uh, even when I'm looking at like life drawing models, I might accentuate some areas to make it clearly more defined. So here, the second wrinkle kind of gets lost in the photo. So when I'm doing my interpretation, actually, it looks like I even lifted the finger 
more than it actually is. I'm going to push it down. But I'm going to accentuate that second line a bit more just to make it more obvious that the finger is directed toward the camera. Like this. And maybe show a little bit of the nail showing. So yeah. I'm going to kind of scooch back up here. Oh yeah, what are people saying? Yeah, I was trying to get some of the questions. Oh. Uh, Chung says you don't want rough hands. People always go on about them, and they split in the cold weather too. I, it's right. It's the trade-off, though. It's like give really good back rubs, but have split fingers. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. I just I cannot imagine you having rough hands. I feel like I take care of them too much for that, but. <sighs> well, people with rough hands usually are doing laborious activities on their hands. I wash I wash the dishes a lot. <laughs> I'm just gonna like there's like no dishes in the sink, but I'm gonna be over there washing them just to like I'm trying to think my grandma I think yeah she but she used like harsh chemicals too though. My grandma's like a bleach person for everything. She like scrubbed the entire house down with bleach. She never wore gloves for doing it either. Oh well, that's probably so why. I, I think her hands, yeah, were definitely very they were very rough from that. <laughs> Tandor so fast. Um, Ooh, oh, Sonic. No, right. The Vic what? says, I don't have nails, I have claws, I have these scratches everywhere in accident. <laughs> Eric Ziva says, Don't ever ambush an artist, they might be drawing with something sharp. Once got ambushed mm -hmm. by a classmate while using a mechanical pencil. <laughs> that would not be good. Did you cut him? <laughs> Ooh, Lavor says I accidentally cut myself with my nail sometimes. Yes, I did that recently. Actually, I think it healed up finally. It was when we were at um, C2E2 in Chicago, and I was like just messing around, and I my thumb went into my finger and like indented it. Is it delayed again? Yeah, hang on, I'm just gonna fix that. Oh yeah. You don't want the third arm making a appearance here. There we go, okay. I'll try to remember to do that more often. What's our time looking like? Um, we are a minute, 10, sorry, an hour, 10 minutes. Oh, oh, we yeah. have plenty of time. Oh my God, I was nervous we were like approaching 70 minutes. Oh, we're, we're good guys. I mean, we are at 70 minutes. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when I'm drawing and I can't think properly. Um, Fem says, I can I actually can pick out my hand from your collector piece quite easily since it has such long nails. <laughs> I think I lost where my hand's at on that one. I can't remember. I'm sure if I looked at it, I could find it. Figure it out. <laughs> Dawson, never with nails. How do you not break them all the time? Um, top coat and let them grow out and don't do anything. <laughs> you won't chip them. All right, we got the delay. Thank you, Candor, for letting me know about that too. <clears throat> uh, Felix says, I'm not done with the proportions yet. Start at five minutes late though. Oh, you got time. Yeah, you're all good. I mean, we still have over an hour. So, like, this is a pretty long study just dedicated to hands. And especially since there's only two, this, even if you come in right now on the stream, I feel like you could still jump in and have a pretty successful pair of hands at the end. But I wanted to do a longer one so that those of you who are following that maybe don't draw hands frequently can maybe look at the way I'm drawing it and the way you're looking at or the way that you're drawing it and allow yourself more time to uh, work on hands because I feel this is one of those sections in art that people always think is really difficult and younger artists don't know what to do with hands. So I just want to slow it down, take your time, and really look at what you're drawing. And I think once you do that more often with any subject matter, you'll be able to draw things uh, better because you're analyzing things more, you're slowing it down, you're breaking down what works, what's not working. And I'm going to 
to do a little bit of my reverse contrasting on these hands, so I'm not going for full realism here. <laughs> um, so I will break some of the shadows a bit. If you want to kind of break some of the illusion of realism as well, you are more than welcome. But usually with studies, you don't want to do this, so maybe it's one of those do what I say, not what I do mm -hmm. scenarios. But I just, I really enjoy drawing hands, and I like breaking the contrast in certain areas. Um, Lavor says, so when laying down your final dark values, like with 6B or more, would you say you burnish the paper with them or, or still build up with light passes? Usually light passes. I rarely do uh, color blocking with a dark pencil. I, I've seen it work really well, and obviously Magnolia kind of made that famous with his inks, but I still like building it up slowly. And I rarely, rarely work with a 6B. It, I, I prefer working with like a 3B, and only once have I worked with a 9B before. It created a really cool result, but it was extremely messy. It was rubbing all over the place. And I think because I don't wear a glove or anything, I'm a little more cautious with that kind of stuff. So having a pencil that didn't allow me to be cautious was a little annoying. But I'll show you when I get to that stage how I work with a darker value because I will be working with most likely a 3B on the stream. You are like always very gentle. I most can never hear, I don't think I've ever like from a distance just heard you drawing because I feel like you're always just doing really light passes on things hmm. and just shading it up. Yeah, I'm definitely one of those slow build up artists. When I'm doing like thumbnailing, I don't think I care that much, but when I'm doing something I know I'm going to try rendering out, that's when I really try to put extra time and energy into it. Uh, Eric Ziva says using a 3H pencil right now, but <clears throat> new cheap sketch pad. So I feel like it. So I feel like I still need a harder pencil. Than a 3H? Uh, yes. I mean, you, you don't want to block yourself where things are getting so light that it becomes too much of a comfort zone. I know I got yelled at all the time in high school for drawing too light because obviously you have the ability to erase it. And I was always told that if you work primarily with a lighter pencil, it's because of uh, fear. And admittedly, that is kind of true for me because I like to have a nice foundation first. Oh, crazy low one, two, three. Thank you for the subscription. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> I like to build it up knowing that I can uh, work darker values on top of it without the fear of, oh, this might ruin the entire drawing. And that's why usually when you talk about like confidence in art, uh, it's the inkers and the people that work with mediums that you can't erase, can't undo. And it will help Like if you want to break some of that uh, fear. I would try working primarily with ink for a little bit. I know it's not my favorite medium, but it definitely helped me when I, I work with ink or do pen work to just let it go. And when I get to them pencils, there are moments where I, I am cautiously but consciously letting it go, and um, putting my mistake into the final drawing and making it work uh, so it doesn't read as a mistake anymore, but intentional. Just because uh, Eric Ziva said um, using a new cheap sketch pad too, so can that sometimes affect the which pencil you're using then? Like the paper? Yeah, I mean... Because like if you use certain papers, do you feel like you have to use a darker one sometimes? I personally like hate cheap paper, I think just for drawing. I mean, you saw the ones I did warm-ups with. Even that's still a little thicker than the light drawing paper that we were given in college because it crumples so quickly and easily. And working... Why, well, thank you, Fidgety, Fidgety Fox, Fox, for subscribing. Oh, that's cute. And I think working uh, with a piece that I want to enjoy and push a little harder if I need to, I don't want the fear of, oh, it'll crumple on me if I push too much. So honestly, it's... One of those things where I would invest more money into your paper as I have seen a lot of drawings when I was in college specifically get ruined because it was with a cheaper paper. And honestly, mixed media paper isn't, I mean, it's expensive compared to cheap drawing paper, but it's, in my opinion, worth it. Oh, 
Oh, well, thank you, Dead you. D. Lou, for subscribing. Thank ding for you. There we go. So, really quick, am I in the middle? Oh, yeah, okay. So, as you can see, this is kind of my foundation layer. So, now I'm going to switch to an HB pencil. I'll probably be sharpening a little bit from time to time. So, if you hear a really obnoxious loud sound, it's not me or Josh, it's the sharpener. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm going to use it right now so you kind of know what it sounds like. So don't be scared when you hear it. <laughs> I don't know how loud it comes through on the stream, but uh, that's what's happening. Um, Luna says, I think the quarantine has made me go mad because I just bought a five pound bag of shell peanuts for the crows that is it. <laughs> you know, honestly, the, um, the crow lady from Home Alone actually makes sense now to me. I see how she... Crow? Oh, pigeon lady. Oh, she's pigeons? Yeah. Um, well, I get her. Same idea, though. Yeah. I get her. <laughs> oh, Luna, that's cute, though. I'm sure the crows are very happy. Yeah. I mean, that's actually kind of amazing that they... Do they come up to you? Well, I'm sure they do. They're just, like, circling over Luna's house <laughs> right now. <laughs> just this black cloud of crows. <laughs> Dawson, I like this tutorial. It's very handy. Yeah, get out of here. <laughs> I'm supposed to be making all the corny dad jokes. Well, and Tijual. <laughs> Tigel. Hmm, ideas for a drawing stream? Oh yeah, Tigel's writing about, hmm, what about a Tigel face stream? <laughs> Just like the entire screen's Tigel's face and it's a draw along. Tigel, as I'm sure you're already aware, I drew your face before. Oh, that's right. Uh-huh. I did a stream way back in the day. This is when I was with CG Cookies still, where I had people that were watching submit their faces and I drew, I think, 12 of them live? That was hard. That was like a study in facial features because I normally have such a one face type. Uh, I'm one of those artists that have same face syndrome. <laughs> so drawing faces that were very different but in the most small ways and you have to really look at the nuances. It was a bit of a challenge but I actually really liked how those turned out. I still look at those studies as some of my proudest life drawing uh, studies that I've done for our faces. Could you do an anniversary one of Tigel's face? <laughs> He's got to earn it, Tizzle. You got to earn it. <laughs> Eric Zivan. Tim, think of all the contrast to draw if, Tim, if Josh got rough hands. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And you could get really nice back rubs. I mean... You're not about that? <laughs> I mean, I would be about I'll, I'll it. Keep my, I'll keep my smooth <laughs> hands for you, Tim. It's fine. <laughs> I just don't see it happening. <laughs> Something else I want to point out really quick. The, the area between the webbing on his pinky and his ring finger has a very light highlight because of the way it's facing the direction of the light source. So it's very light. And then it's pushed up against the ring finger, which has a very uh, mid-tone, slightly darker value. So you can push that contrast there. And as you can see, as I'm doing it, it'll really push and separate the two fingers from one another. So this is, to me, this is the fun part of drawing, where you can start to push and pull forms to create the illusion of uh, something being closer or further away from the, the viewer of the piece. Also, just so everyone knows, we are at the hour mark. Actually, a little under. It's like a, we're at 58 minutes. OK. Thank you. <clears throat> Um, oh, Digital, I've got some good nail tips. We'll talk. Yes, <laughs> I could use those. Mine have been shipping lately, but I think wintertime sometimes they get a little bit more brittle. So summer they tend to do a little better. Um, Dawson says, did you ever want to branch out into full cartoon mode? Oh, I mean, I do. I When I worked with CG Cookie, I was looking at some of my old stuff. I did a lot of cartoon stuff because they would do a lot of animated uh, type tutorials that they would need me to do concept art for. So I did like a candy cane little guy, I did a, a little monster made completely of ice cream. Mm -hmm. So I actually really enjoy doing that stuff. I find it to be easier, which I, I probably should explore that more, but I usually explore it in October. So for the Drawtober drawings, which is another thing that I, I run if you wanna, if you wanna challenge in October, but don't wanna do all 31 days because it can be really obnoxious, you can join Drawtober, and I will have the prompts up in August, 
But that's when I, I try to be a little more silly, more macabre, and I can explore that uh, range and style of drawing. Because I, as much as I love doing this kind of stuff, realism can get boring. And even when I'm doing all my swordplay stuff or my, uh, my normal drawing stuff, it can be a little uh, too serious. And I feel like as a person, I'm, I'm not the most serious person with a life. I, I don't take things very seriously. Uh, I take my career very seriously and I take when I do draw seriously, but I think subject matter wise, I want some of the silliness to show through because that is a good chunk of my personality as well. And I don't want to just be seen as a super serious artist. So uh, if you want to watch me in October, that's when I will we'll do a little more fun, cartoony looking things. And every now and then, like I drew the dirt kids and I did the goblin with the wind oh, chimes. Yeah. I love the little uh, witch cat you have with the big <laughs> eyes. Yeah, people always tell me about that one. That one's so cute. I mean, I guess it's one of the only cats that I've drawn that wasn't just a pet portrait. I mean, Astrid, you know, obviously too. Now the big Astrid one you have. Oh, I did do yeah. Astrid's little chubby thing yep. for Christmas. Little chubby Astrid. She's so cute. Um, so Chung J5 is Jensen, which I remember from a couple weeks hey. ago. I have it down on the list now, so I won't. Well, I won't Jensen. miss that out. But Jensen says, "How are you guys fighting lockdown? Assuming you have that there, um, it's been going okay. I mean, I think better for Tim. I think Tim because he can draw and he's home all the time right now, so it's great for him. I think I just find myself being anxious about everything going on, which Tim has to deal with too." <laughs> Honestly, I know that outside of the house, things aren't, like, people are dying, and it is a serious matter. But in this house, this little world that I live in, where I, I don't get any visitors now, I don't have to go anywhere to see people, I'm such an introvert. For me, I just get to draw all day, I get to play video games at night, I get to hang out with Josh at night, and then maybe watch movies, and that's it. For me, this is, like, perfect, because I have been getting so much work done. I have a Kickstarter coming out. And I can just sit and work and not feel that I have distractions. So personally, this has been kind of fun for me, but I am also not, you know, making light of the situation because I know how serious it is for a lot of people. And I felt bad because I was talking to Villarte last Friday, which speaking of which, I have a new interview with, if you guys know Pete Morbacher, who does Angel Arian, I'm going to be bringing him on for a live interview mm -hmm. next Friday. But Villarte was saying how, or Villarte. <sighs> The, the the he like rolls the R part, the oh. arte, the arte. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> and he is in a studio apartment with his wife in California, so he can't even leave his studio, which is really small. And I felt for him immediately because at least, like, I have a backyard. I can you know go out there if I want. I was raking leaves the other day. We have an entire house that we can kind of spread our wings a bit, or if we want to go on a bike ride or for a walk you're more than able to do where we're at because most people wouldn't be walking outside anyways and we live in a quiet old person neighborhood so it's not like it's very busy anyways so i don't know i i've been enjoying the time but i also know that this is really hard for a lot of people and i don't want to make it sound like oh you know joy and balloons oh yeah because i i know that a lot of people are not having a good time right now i think yeah it's weird to I think my only issue is I feel like I'm not doing enough, which I'm sure everyone, or not, a lot of I think a lot of people are dealing with right now, though, where they, you just don't know, um, I think we sometimes put a lot of our um, confidence in ourselves and work. Um, so I think definitely living with Tim, because Tim's drawing all the time, so sometimes I compare myself to Tim, too, I'm like, oh, Tim's working, I should be doing something, too. It's just there's not really anything I can be doing. Mm -hmm. Um and then also, too, it's like I have to understand Tim loves drawing. So as much as it's like work, because it's, you know, I don't know what to say. It's business still in a way. Like it's going towards your um, Instagram. Like you're promoting these things in a way. You're still like loving doing it, though. So for uh, me, it's like I have to just understand like Tim's working, but he's also like in his own and he's loving what he's doing. Um, so it's okay right now. I just have to be okay with not having much to do. Because there's no conventions, I can't prep for those. Emails, I mean, emails are pretty steady, though, so that's been good. Yeah, surprising. Well, people aren't responding as much. Yeah, <laughs> it's been kind of reaching out to people a few times just to... 
get an answer, but... Like, I'm horrible about reaching back or, like, getting back to people online. But when other professional people do it, I'm like, strange. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I was the only one that's really bad at that. It's, it's a little rough. But admittedly, I, I purposely don't respond to people. Like, even my phone, I'm sure, I think there's, like, 14 unread text messages. Oh, gosh, yeah. I'm, I just really enjoy in-person interaction. I'm just not an online interaction type person. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's how I am, too. Work interactions, I'm okay. It's, like, emails and stuff. But when it goes outside of that, it's hard for me. I think it's not so much hard for me. I just hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think that's why the friends that I have now, they understand I just, I don't do well with online communication. I feel like a few have slipped through the cracks. So like Kat and Sean, like they'll all, st I'll stay in touch with them or like oh, my cousins yeah. who I, I love. Uh, and then, you know, my mom and dad, I'll, I'll let them slide, I guess. It definitely is. Um, it's been good though. I like I like the privacy. I like being able to just play video games too. I read a lot. Actually, no, I've been reading a lot. That was a straight lie. I want to read a lot more. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I feel like since Josh and I have dated, Josh has realized I'm a very like you can't embellish or you can't even slightly lie I to do, me I because I will call it all. Too much. It's an issue. But what's good is I feel like you learned a lot about yourself, and. My I've learned how to be kinder, and then you've learned how not to, or just how to be more straight up with people. Yeah, no, I definitely embellish, though. My mom was a big embellisher. Um, she still is. I love her, though. <laughs> I was going to say, because my sister is the biggest embellisher. I, oh, I look yeah. up to her so much, but every story she tells, it never feels like it's the full truth. Like, there's always something that was exaggerated or something that was... <laughs> laced in there to make the story more interesting or more uh intriguing okay but you hear. don't like you don't edit stories a little bit to make them more interesting oh i'll edit them in terms of, like my word choice or i know how to like pull the the suspension or yeah. those things but if let's say i won a thousand dollars i wouldn't tell people i won a uh, crap ton of money like i won 10 grand because then that's lying but you can still in, you can still embellish the story around winning the thousand dollars, you know. That's relative, though. I mean, it, that could be a crap ton of money to someone. Oh, I know, but if yeah. you use a different number, then you're lying. Oh, I got you. To me, embellishing yeah, always, well, at least the way my sister does it, it always just feels like it's lying. And then they're trying to spice up the story because maybe it wasn't that interesting to begin right. with. But I think stories are really interesting, especially when you talk to someone who does like never embellishes that way whenever they do say something and if it is something kind of crazy you're like oh wow this is really nuts because if this is happening to this person like what's another I good example like, i don't know i just don't tell stories enough so i feel like when i embellish oh, it's maybe. more like i don't know to make it seem more interesting for a second <laughs> but i'm, not, I'm telling you you don't have to telling. i know but you you you're don't have to. But you're good at telling stories. I don't know. I feel like I have to embellish a little bit to make mine feel interesting, too. I think you're really good at, like, describing situations that you've gone through. I feel like I cannot describe <laughs> situations. <laughs> I, maybe. I do feel like it is a little bit of a learned trait, because I've been doing cons for six years. Yeah. That I feel I was a little awkward when I started doing them, just because, you know, I'm a quiet artist. I don't... I don't enjoy talking that much. And as you've just heard, I'm, I'm not very good at like sustaining online friendships. So having people in person want to hang out and I want to get to know you better, I was kind of awkward. So you kind of <laughs> learn after a while how to tell stories that are uh, funny and how to engage the person listening in a way that either involves them or if you can kind of read that they're not really feeling the story to like end it quicker. That's one thing I will say I'm pretty good at. I'm pretty good at reading a room. Because oh, yeah. if I start to talk and I can just tell that no one is into whatever I'm saying, I'll I'll cut it off or I'll I'll end it short. But if people are really enjoying it, that's when I start to embellish and I start to but not lie. I just make it I put more details into it. I, I look at uh, the reactions where I explain, you know, how people were reading this. So yeah. You're no Tim's it's because I don't, I wasn't, I didn't know you years ago, but you're great with like groups now. Like you can handle now I, yourself. Now I feel good. I always just feel like I get quiet if there's a lot of people in the room, which I'm 
talk sheet. Okay, let's do it. I was going to say, I feel like you enjoy being a listener, though. Yeah, no, it's a lot better. Like, when we have a party, I feel you find comfort in listening and, like, taking part, but not being the center. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh, yeah. All right, I will keep moving so I don't get too behind in comments. Oh, yes, yes. What are the people Oh, yeah, you know, I still have to do the count, too. Actually, oh, I'm going to take a break right. from YouTube comments, guys. I'm going to figure out who the winner of the giveaway is. Because I have to count to 183. Then you know what? I'm going to start rambling, and I'll talk about drawing these hands yes. right here. So if you haven't, if you've been kind of watching, kind of still drawing your own, what I'm doing here is I'm edging out a lot of the areas that I know confidently I want to be darker, or I want to have a nice edge to them. And then I am filling in with value to create the illusion of form. So on these fingers, you can see how the finger tip part. Oh, I hear our baby. You want to let her in? Astrid, I'm counting. <laughs> I'm coming. Uh, you can see how it's darker on the finger tip, and then oh, underneath it's a little lighter. <laughs> oh, she smells the outside. Oh. You, you can open a little bit, that's fine. Okay. There you oh go, Astrid. My goodness, sweetie. So our cat loves the outdoors. This is our baby cat, Astrid. She loves the outdoors, but she's not allowed out. Because we let her out once. Well, we had a leash. She did not like the leash. Nice breeze, Astrid. But it's far too cold right now, and we don't have a fence. And even though Astrid, I don't think, would just bolt for it, I think she's a very curious cat, and I think she would get lost. So I don't think we're going to allow her out yet until we get a a real fence, <coughs> and one that we know that she wouldn't really climb over. So then I'm going to do the same type of action on this finger. And these two, oh, they're not fully touching. This one's like overlapping just a touch here. And wherever fingers uh, touch, I try to have a really dark spot. Or I make it dark on one finger and then lighter on the other, kind of like I did here. So it really pushes the form out. And this finger is actually kind of dark. Oh, something else we could discuss. Uh, I guess this is more for some people over the, the vast majority here, but is anyone watching Making the Cut or Next in Fashion? So Making the Cut's on Amazon, and then Next in Fashion is on Netflix, and they're, they're ones that I'm very much comparing and contrasting because I personally like Making the Cut's hosts and the filming style better, but the actual designers and what they're producing is so much better on Next in Fashion. Uh, it's it's kind of a weird compare and contrast because what one show is lacking, the other show makes up for. So I was just curious if any of you are watching that. Because I think now that we're all in quarantine, I feel we're just, you know, we're binging a bunch of shows. And the other show that I really like that I've been, well, I've been a little frustrated with because of who's in the finale, but Lego Masters ends tonight. And I'm sure a lot of you maybe have played with Legos as a kid. So the fact that they had this whole show, and I mean, they had some really good talent on the show, and they're creating really just inventive, cool things. Uh, but it ends tonight, and I'm very curious to see who wins. Can you find the winner? We have our winner. <gasps> we have our winner. Do we okay. announce it right now, or do we wait? We'll wait till the end. Okay. Um, <clears throat> make it caught up a little bit here, though. <laughs> Sorry, so there's a comments clip down, so then I have to get caught up where I was at oh, before. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Kendor says also posted a little tip in the follow along channel. Thank you, Kendor. Yeah, thank you, Kendor. Um, Dawson says, I got told that too, that I draw too light. I looked at my teacher and said, an artist knows what they value. She laughed at me. Good times. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I did the same thing that you did when I was your age. 
Or I assume they said high school, right? Was it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, or was it college? They, they didn't say. Basically, I I was very bullheaded, especially when I was in high school. But my high school teacher was awful to me. She treated me. Well, I mean, she she liked me, and I was definitely one of her favorites. But she was mean to me, and specifically the way that I drew. And she also said that I drew too light. And I was always like, oh, that's how I prefer it. And you see too many artists draw too dark. And I can be the first one that draws lighter. And I think what I was doing, and maybe what you might be doing a little bit, is kind of creating a few defense mechanisms for defending your what you do. But honestly, I would try reaching outside of your comfort zone and working darker. Because once I did that in college, I wish I had more of a push in high school because... That's when I really started to see some improvement in my work because I could add more value and things felt more rounded out. And I realized I was doing it out of my own stubbornness and a little bit of uh, fear, admittedly. And I don't want you to uh, follow that same path and take longer than I did uh, to realize that, oh, maybe I should work a little darker and at least experiment with it for a few uh, drawings. And something... I mean, not that this is you necessarily, this is kind of talking more broad and vaguely, but never use your style, or that's my preferred way of drawing, to defend a critique that is meant to be constructive. Because I think we get really attached to our work. I know I do too, I get it. And it wasn't until I was in my middle, like mid-20s that I started accepting critique more as a... Uh, more, more than just like a light suggestion. It was a real thing that really I wanted to uh, explore more. When someone critiqued my work, I, I saw it as an opportunity to grow rather than uh, calling out my weaknesses. It was an opportunity to grow. And I hope to do that for you guys even when we do the mini, mini critique at the end of the stream. Because I, I definitely want to be one of those artists who when I teach others or I'm trying to help others, I'm seen as helping, not just degrading, because I don't want someone to walk away from a critique that I give and feel torn apart. I, I try to be honest, and I try to be more true to what I am seeing and how I think I can help you, But I and I try not to sugarcoat things. So when we get into the mini critiques, just know I'm doing my best to want to help you and improve what you're already good at. I don't want to move you in a different direction. I just want to push you further in the direction you're already going. And sometimes we we create traps for ourselves that we can't move forward. And I, I want to help uh, push through those. I, I think critiquing's helping more than just saying that looks good or. Yep. Yeah. That's uh. You haven't seen Whiplash, right? No. Okay. I I definitely want to show it to you because. The quote that really stands out to me and the one that really hit an accord with Sean is the worst thing you can say to someone is good job. Hmm. And I mean, the movie goes I to mean, an extreme yeah. length of never accepting what the pupil or the student is doing. And that way they're constantly improving. And it kind of puts a, a lens on the fact that, yeah, when people are given the compliment or told that they're doing a good job, oftentimes the student doesn't then push themselves to be more actively training in their work. They've already gotten the, the validation that they needed. So they can just coast on whatever they're doing. So what Whiplash tried to do is go the opposite direction where you never are satisfied with uh, your work and what happens to the student. Now, obviously, there's some bad things that happen with that because... <laughs> I, was gonna say, I don't think that's like necessarily... Um healthy to deal with all the time no but i think that's why you need to have people in your life too that are those more support where they yep. do say that because i think if that's all you're getting from life you're never going to find satisfaction in life though either yes i think i would keep more people that are probably more negative about your work and then have a few of like your close friends and family that you know give you that encouragement and make you feel loved because sometimes we attribute our work to how much people like us which is obviously unhealthy, and I know as a lot um, of us artists do, we become too attached to our work. So instead, I would have people that you really trust give you feedback that is constructive and that you know can be worthwhile to improve, but then also have people in your life that are encouraging and supportive and uh, make you feel 
cared for because I think having a balance of both is important. Also, I just remember, Jensen, how are you doing right now? You asked us, I totally forgot to ask you. Yeah, how are you how doing, are you, Jensen? Yeah, how are you doing with this? Because I know a lot of people, it's just, it does get you get stir crazy when you're home. Like, thankfully, we do, I'm here with Tim. Like, I, we have people around, but I, I don't know if you're yeah, living you alone right or now? if you are, especially if they're living in an apartment right now, too, just a smaller space, that's yeah. going to be a little harder. <clears throat> Can or me too, dad jokes for life. <laughs> and Tim's useful tips, creator. <laughs> tips with Kim. Oh, if I remember, sometimes, I'm sorry, sometimes I scoot my paper way up. Yeah. If you could just let me know I'm off screen. <laughs> oh, yeah. Also, I'm going to do a quick refresh on the camera just in case. Thank you, thank you. <clears throat> Okay, so now I'm going, well, no, actually, never mind. Take it back. Uh, Fidgety Fox says, I'm planning on a piece with many hands coming up. Send good vibes for me. I'm nervous getting my posing proportions right. Fidgety Fox, all the all the good vibes for you. I'm sending you so much <laughs> of my love for hands in a form. I'm going to, there it goes. It was sent to you. I hope you accept it. <laughs> yeah, Tim did a... Um... The 300, like over 300 hands in the collector. So I know that it's not like you were nervous about it, but that definitely was a lot of time. Yeah, you had a lot of patience with that one. Yeah, I would just say if you're going to be doing a piece with a lot of hands, just be patient with it. Know that the extra time you take into crafting them, the better the end result will be. And there's no need to rush drawing a bunch of hands. Or if you ever do a project where you're going to be doing a lot in it, like I'm doing the five foot drawing with the underwater aquatic utopian don't rush it and enjoy the process i have this was given to me at a con and i uh i kind of stole my friend kyle's way of keeping things on your desk as like little reminders mm -hmm. so thank you kyle but this was given to me at a con and she was a metal worker oops i'll show it here and this little guy uh she gave it to me for free and i was like i will pay you for it like what do you want for it because she crafted it in silver and i just thought it was really cool and she was like, oh, no, I'll just make another one when I get home. I was like, well, yeah, but don't you want to profit from this? And then what she said was, I don't do my metalworking to make money from it. I do it because I genuinely enjoy the process of making them. And uh, knowing that I gave it to someone who will appreciate it and I can make another one gives me joy. And it you know, fulfills the purpose of why I do it. And that was so significant to me that now I keep it on my desk. And even uh, my drawing, like the, the five-foot drawing or sword play, which will take me forever to make, it's okay to enjoy the process as long as you're diligent on at least, you know, staying up to actually doing it. But it's okay. It's okay to have things take time. I still believe in the whole argument quality versus quantity. I'm definitely on team quality side. But I think when you're starting off, it's okay to, you know, push out a lot of quantity. But it's okay if you want to create a piece that will take you a significant amount of time and effort and uh, really pushes you to hone in on your craft. I don't think enough artists do that nowadays, to be honest. And I, I think I got caught in that buzz of focusing too much on creating social media drawings rather than focusing on drawings that really showed off who I was as an artist and what I was capable of. Because I'm so aware of always posting on Instagram and that's the only way to keep your algorithm high and uh, I think getting wrapped up too much in that world can be detrimental to what you create for sure. <laughs> Do we have some more good questions? Um, Jensen says more than welcome to draw my face. Um, <laughs> Chinese features. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I'm very behind on the thing so Oh, if you want to do like a speed. Yeah. Okay. Um, Luna says, the crows don't trust me enough to come up to me yet, but this <laughs> one in particular will sit in the tree in the backyard and honk at the house until I bring food. Oh, Luna, <laughs> give it start, time. They're going to start give yelling at you. <laughs> Dawson Walker says, you're not the only one who can hand out corny jokes. <laughs> I nailed it. <laughs> I love these. Every time I do a hand stream, I always get a few hand puns, so I love it. Keep them coming. Fem says, yeah, Fem says, please keep the corny jokes coming. <laughs> I'm here for it. Eric Ziva says, a lot of your pin art and Halloween art was cartoony with that realism edge. Yeah, definitely. Yep. The, 
You like the um, the ice cream one, the sweet tooth, all of those. Oh, still one of my favorite drawings. Well, thank you, Rene, Renee's art studio for subscribing. Let me give you a little bit. Oh, there we go. Oh, sometimes our timer like blinks in and out. Did you notice that? No. I just noticed that. Interesting. Anyways. Uh, oh, Barbara is back. Welcome back, Barbara. The meeting is Welcome kind of back, kind of late, so I came back. Fingers crossed the meeting gets canceled. No, just <laughs> I, I mean, that was oh yeah, that was always my hope too at work. <laughs> like oh, I hope this just goes. Right. I always liked Skype meetings because um, which I'm guessing that's probably what you're doing right now because the thing. But when I worked at an office, I hated physical meetings because you have to like actually pay attention. Where it, when we did Skype meetings, you could kind of just sit at your desk and like read or browse. I can it. totally imagine you being the person that's like, oh, my video doesn't work. I don't know what to oh, do. No. Technical issues. I mean, you just don't want to be on video because you want to be like playing oh, your Animal Crossing. <laughs> <laughs> Eric Zina says you are one of the few artists who prefers Final Fantasy X. I know quite a few artists. Sorry, I know quite a few of my artist friends that love Final Fantasy IX, and I guess I can see why there's uh, a difference. I mean, I I got a good chunk through nine, and then I stopped because what game came out? Seven. No. No, this was. Oh, I I started playing Bioshock. That's right. Uh, you're right. I got to show over my pencil really quick. Uh, to me, ten is a perfect. I think. Oh well, thank you, Lavore draws. Yeah, I'm sure yeah, I said yeah. it wrong. Thank Lavore. you so much. We're just gonna do one little bell ring. Everyone prepared. <laughs> there you go. I still want to shock everyone with like a crazy bell ring. But the reason I think 10 is perfect, well, one, I don't mind turn based games. I, I love chess. So to me, 10 was just like a giant board game type style of gameplay. But the story to me is so profound and deep and insightful, kind of strange. But when you try to break it apart and the way that they paste it, where I mean, I don't want to get too much in spoilers, but the you meet Yuna, and Yuna is going to sacrifice herself to save the world, essentially. Uh, but to do so, she must also become... Um, she must... Well, I don't want to get too much into it, but essentially you think she's going to die the whole game. And it's really sad because at one point, uh, uh, the main character is like, why does Yuna take so much time at each place? Because he doesn't know that she's going to die, because he's from a different time, so he's clueless about what's going on. And then Lulu, who's one of my favorite women of all time, says, uh, well, she's she's taking it in because this will be the last time she ever sees this place. And there are moments in this game that are really, really special and kind of make you think or like stop because uh, there, are, there are little things like that. Like, you know, we'll look at every place before she moves on. And then you learn later it's because she knows she'll never see it again. So just things like that, and then obviously the ending, the music, everything about it <coughs> was done so well. But yeah, 9 is great as, as well. I think 12, I just restarted playing before Animal Crossing came out, and I actually really, really enjoyed my time there, because I started talking to all the non-playable characters. But that's a whole other discussion. But I will say, 7 Remake has been really, really good so far. Um, 30 minutes, by the way. Okay. 29 minutes. So now I'm going to switch to my, this is a 3D pencil. So I'm going to push some of these darker areas to be darker. Then I'm going to really do some of the details with my mechanical pencils. Or pencil, I should say, my <laughs> point two. So that's where I'll be doing some of the edging on the wrinkles and some of the, the cutting that maybe I didn't really like how I did with my larger pencil. You should try shading with two pencils sometime. At once. I want to be ambidextrous so bad. Do you know how much faster I could be at drawing if oh I could work gosh. with both hands at the same time? I just mean in one hand. Two oh. Uh, I mean, I've done that challenge before where you hold one here. Yeah. I mean, it, it never looks that good. Or at least for me doing it. I'm sure there's people that have mastered it. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be cool, though, using both hands. Be intense right? to watch. I, I watched an artist do that. I, I think that's so nuts. <clears throat> um, sorry, I keep losing my place. Keeps jumping. Oh, uh, there we go. Perfect. Oh, Dawson says, I feel so bad for my friends. Most are city folk, and they're kind of going stir-crazy with this virus quarantine. Yeah, definitely, mm -hmm. like, extroverted people, 
you know, make sure they're being taken care of. Because I yeah, call this them. Is, this is their time that they're struggling. Um, yeah, I feel like as introverts, this isn't the worst uh, time to be in, like, quarantine. But for extroverts, oh. Yeah, it's a little rough. <laughs> Jensen says, Tim Von Rieden, butchering names since 1989. <laughs> <laughs> since I was born. <laughs> Just a baby. Just a baby Tim. <laughs> Tigel, we are aware about the unreachable Tim syndrome. <laughs> ah! I mean, I do, honestly, it actually is a problem because I project that then onto other people, which I have openly admitted has been a problem. Because um, even with some of the friends that I've had in the past, I know Sean always felt this pressure to be better than he was. So he was like, you know, it's always good getting that sense from you, but I always feel like I can never measure up. So I do my best to put my crazy unreachable expectation on myself because I think I'm good at, you know, just... Oh, no, I think Tejal's talking about that people can't reach out to you. Oh! Messaging. Oh, yeah, yeah, don't message me. <laughs> I, mean, I get what you're saying with that, though, too. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, even, like, my closest friends here know that I just, I hate having my phone around me. I think it is such a distraction for me because then I do get sucked up into it. And, I mean, I've, I kind of learned this about myself in my early 20s. So I try not to have my phone near me, ever. I don't keep the internet open. Like, I don't have Skype or Discord open. I don't look at the news. I kind of have my own little world that I, I fall into. Oh, gosh, yeah. And, I mean, I get my news from Josh and Sean, and sometimes I'm like, oh, is that what's happening right now? <laughs> I probably look at the news more than I should. No, I think it's good, though. I think it's good to stay up on current events. It just, I think I get so distracted from it. And I really learned that the way I work is best when I'm kind of in my own little bubble. And I just have YouTube playing or a Netflix show, and I can just work. Hmm. Ella says, I'm so bad at telling stories. Even if it's a good one, I make it sound like something really uninteresting. Thank you, Ella. That's exactly what I deal with, too. <laughs> I feel like, I can watch people's faces as I tell a story, and they kind of just, like, slowly... They're just, they're, like, going out. They're checking out, and I'm like, oh, crap. So that's where I start embellishing, because I'm like... Got to make this seem a little bit more interesting. Like, it didn't just take me five minutes. It was 30 minutes and five things happened in between all that. So, I don't, I think it's my way I try to explain things. I cannot, I try to be too literal. So that's where the embellishing comes in because I feel like when I try to be too literal explaining something, it just makes it uninteresting. <laughs> Ella, my mom is always exaggerating. My mom is always exaggerating no matter what. Right? That's where I think I get mine exaggerating from, too. Yeah, I feel like it's kind of an inherited trait. Because then if that's your learned behavior of how to tell stories, that's how you then you're going to grow up and tell stories. Victor M. says, yeah, at the age of 21, I'm living in a small flat with my two little siblings, my mother and grandmother, and I'm dying because of the chaos. <laughs> oh, I live in Seville, Andalusia. We love to go out. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's hard, tough. especially uh, being close quarters with everyone. It's like, I'm sure you love being with your family, but when you're always with them, that can be a little bit... When they said they were kids? Yeah, two little siblings. Oh, well, siblings are a little better because you can still mess with them. But when it's your own kids, you can't really like, mess <laughs> with them. <laughs> uh, at least you can mess with your little siblings. Uh, Lavor says, have you ever done a drawing completely in black colored pencil to see what your work would look like in high contrast, basically? Have you done a drawing in toned paper? Just curious. Actually, oh, yeah. I'm going to go quickly. Let me see if I can leave you with a, one more question. I need to use the bathroom really quick. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I like what, or you know what, I can embellish yeah. on that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you can um, embellish, or uh, what's the word we were just using? You can exaggerate a little bit. No, I won't exaggerate. <laughs> but I will say, with tone paper, I really like working with tone paper when I did life drawing studies because then you can push highlights working with a white pencil and it can create these really cool uh, results from it. Uh, and only last year did I start to really experiment with powdered graphite starting as my base. I, I still want to do more of it, but it's so messy. I want to create kind of a space for myself to do it outside once it gets a little warmer. Uh, I just, I really like being able to pull values up because that's kind of how I work digitally. I would start on a darker kind of backdrop or form and then pull out my forms with lighter values. So I do kind of miss it some, from time to time, 
But I think with pencil, I just enjoy, you know, slowly building up my my values. It is frustrating when I'm working on uh, an entire area that needs to be a middle tone value because then you have to build it up and to keep it consistent and neutral, it can take a while. So sometimes, like if I'm working on a character that is of a darker complexion, I, the buildup will take me a little while, but I don't rush it because I want it to stay consistent. So yeah, in that case, I probably should work with a darker uh, tone paper if I want to get a result like that quicker. But for now, I'm just going to stick with doing this. Because my next exploration that I really want to do is working with stained glass. Unfortunately, all the, I can't get glass anywhere right now unless I order online. And I'm one of those people who I want to, I want to see it in person. I want to see the viscosity of the colors and all that jazz. So I'll have to wait until this whole pandemic's over. But I did get the light box. I got some of the things ready to work with stained glass, but I just got to uh, clear my plate off of some of these other projects that I have going on first. <laughs> Okay, I'm back. Hello. Welcome back. Um, Sammy says, I do the same thing. If I see people losing interest, I cut it short. And if they're enjoying, I sort of extend the story better, take my time to add more details. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's probably, I think, what you do more of. But I also realize that every story is going to have down points for the most part, unless you're watching Tiger King. <laughs> because usually stories have like the punchline and like the build up. There's some fun parts, mm -hmm. but there's always going to be some dips of not so interesting details, but I feel like they do add to the whole story. You know, it's kind of like when you order a cheesecake and they put a little mint or something on the top of it, you're not going to eat it. That's not the part that you enjoy. I mean, some people do, but the, the beef of what you're eating is the cake and that's what you're enjoying. But sometimes a little embellished, a little mint leaf just adds a little more to it. Um, Lavor says, I like being the observer in the group. In, I like being the observer in group gatherings. Same. Yeah, being that wallflowers, I mean, yeah. <laughs> it is kind of nice, because then you can let other people tell their stories. You kind of just keep your story to yourself. I don't know, I feel like I like telling, I can do, I tell you stories all the time. Yeah. But I feel yeah. like you kind of just sit there, because I do ramble a lot, too. That's why I don't tell stories, I ramble too much. Or, like, I go on this side trail of, like... <laughs> I mean, I ramble, too, I get it. <laughs> I feel like you're good though when you're telling a story to people, like a group. You're better at sticking to like the story and not oh, side. Yeah. Like I think uh, Sean's really bad too. Like where Sean will go on side stories too. Yeah. Yeah. But Sean's really good about reading. Well, well, I mean he's pretty good at being able to tell like when the joke's coming and he can kind of ham it up. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm not good at that. I think you can't. I think you've had moments though where I'm like, oh, that was actually really funny and clever. I think you just got to do it more. Then I'm pretty exhausted after doing that. I'm like, well. <laughs> that took a lot out of me. Right, it took a lot. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it. Not getting another one for a while. Pretty much. <laughs> Candor says, even though you said watercolor is not so much your thing, I think by the way you plan your drawings in your head with the values, you would do great. Also, we need to do a, a next donation go, Astrid Cam. <laughs> ah, I mean, yeah. Astrid moves around too much. I wish we could. I was going to say, like, she doesn't stay still unless she's sleeping. But normally she's just go, 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 go. Always an adventure. But what about watercolor? Do you think you would ever... No. No? I think what I did, when I do draw October drawings, I think that's where I could explore the other mediums, kind of like I did, I did two years ago, where every day was a different medium. Watercolor is just, it's not my thing. Which is okay, because I think it makes me respect people that do do watercolor, and I can look at, you know, what they're doing and know just how difficult it actually can be to work with watercolor. So I can definitely appreciate people that do it, but I just know it's not for me. I did learn, though, I really like working with charcoal. I like working with crayons, and I like working with, what was the other one? Oh, food. I really like working, like when I did my Starburst sculpture, I really liked working uh, with, what would those be called? What was the thing on Project One Ray where there was like, not inconvenient materials, unconventional materials. Oh, yeah. So that was really fun, uh, working with the Starburst. As my favorite song says, take your pick and stay out the way. What? From Palante, that song. 
Oh. Yeah, I always like that phrase where she's like, take your pick, stay out the way. What does that even mean? I don't... I always took it as like... I don't know. <laughs> Choose what you want to be and then, you know, stay out the way. Oh, I can kind of see that. I don't know. Do, 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 do. <clears throat> What's our time at? We are at. Oh, 15 minutes? Yeah, wow, we're doing good. You gave me another sticky note. You said to remind of 15 minutes. We're not quick there. That's right, that's right. That's, yeah. Pick, stay out the way, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> um, Fem says binge next in fashion a couple weeks ago. <gasps> Don't spoil it, but... Yeah, no spoilers, but it's good. If you watch Making the Cut, let me know if you can kind of tell the difference or like the similarities between them. I was like, I you said there were a lot of questions. I know, I can cut. So oh, if you guys have noticed, I switched to my mechanical pencil, and then this is where I'm gonna be doing some of the smaller edging and detailing. So if there's a pocket where it looks like I could fill it in because the value is missing, I'll use this pencil with a very small circle stroke and I'll fill in my form. So I'm gonna go throughout the entire hand, well actually both hands and um, that's how I'm going to finish off the stream. And then we'll do the critique. Go ahead. Um, Eric Zeta says, I do not watch any of these kinds of shows because I just feel like drama is made to entertain. Ha! I mean, these shows aren't rooted in drama, in my opinion. I think they're rooted in passionate people working in a craft that may be unfamiliar to you. I mean, the making the cut, I would argue if they're passionate. But... <laughs> That's very true. Very good shade. Uh, so, like, I watched Face Off and Project Runway and America's Next Top Model. Well, uh, you know what? America's Next Top Model definitely had drama. Oh, that's full of drama, yeah. Yeah, but when they actually are doing the work part, especially in Face Off or Lego Masters 15 or... 15 minutes, 15 minutes. Making the cut, whatever these shows are, uh, it usually inspires me because then you see people that are really passionate about what they're doing, and obviously I can relate that to my own life where I really am passionate about drawing. And seeing other people get like really hyped about this new concept or idea that they want to work on gets me uh, like reminds me of oh yeah I, I get really excited about working on an idea or a project and then it makes me want to draw so I think that's why even when I was in my high school years I would put these shows on in the background and I would just draw alongside them so I guess it just carried over into my full adulthood where I still watch them as like background noise to when I'm working. Yeah, I think next in fashion, there's really no drama. If anything, it's more like the drama if they're messing something up or... Yes. Yeah, it's not really like drama. Actually, same with making Kardashian the cut. level. Yeah, making yeah. the cut didn't really have drama either. But um, I do agree, some of the seasons, though, you can kind of tell, catered to being drama. Uh, and obviously with any drag queen show, so like RuPaul's, I mean, it, there's a lot of drama. But I still watch it for the same reason I watch the other ones, is because when they do the creative parts, sometimes it's so inspiring and so good. But yeah, sometimes the drama, I mean, sometimes it's it's juicy and it can be entertaining, but sometimes you're like, okay, come on. Like, no one cares. Have your argue. Let's move on. Wait, hang on. Speaking of drama, though, Kendra says, so out of breath schwa, counting is hard labor, I feel ya. The I, what? No, Kendra says... I was so out of breath, counting is hard labor. After oh. I did the counting, that's the one thing I, I know I'm dramatic because I do make sounds a lot, and I really pretend like things are harder than they are sometimes, just purely because, like, maybe that's my way of getting attention sometimes, I think. <laughs> I mean, probably, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How often do does it work? Yeah. It works all the time. It works on you every time. You laugh at it every time if I'm like, Oh, Tim. Oh, yeah, because I yeah. don't take it seriously. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it gets what I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> what exactly are you wanting? <laughs> Attention. <laughs> oh, sorry, my hair totally just clipped the camera. <gasps> Should I refresh the camera? Yeah. Just in case. There we go. <clears throat> All right, so we have, yes, we do have a winner for the giveaway. But you have to wait 12 minutes and 55 seconds. Yeah, so we'll do the giveaway winner. We'll announce that, and then we'll get into the contest. <laughs> Zoom it up your head. 
Hell oh, right. <laughs> like, oh, there's oh, my head. Oh, <laughs> oh that's cool. Um, All right, Dreya says, my art teacher was terrifying. They'd have this liner pieces up in the hallway, and he'd critique in front of everyone. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. I mean, I kind of like that. <laughs> I think it would be similar to that. Ooh, no. I, I think for myself, I prefer to be critiqued one-on-one. -on -one. Well, yeah, no one wants the shame of their community. Right. I always think of that scene in Euphoria where she got on the stage and had to tell like her summer story and in her head there was like a spotlight and everything went dark around her. Oh yeah. That's like the feeling I get in my head and if like there's a lot of people <laughs> looking at me. Um, Which I'm still bummed that season two got delayed now. I know. I totally understand why but uh, I was really looking forward to that. <clears throat> Kendra says that our teacher in middle school and we had an assignment to paint a scenery with trees, a bench, and a little house. I took it and painted it at night. Time, Dawn, and she said to do it again. Oh, Kandor. <laughs> In grade school? Dang. Jeez, you guys had some rough teachers. I was going to say, I think grade school is too young to be like on top of someone for their art. I think when they hit high school level, there's a level of uh, adapting and maturity that they can handle harsher critique. But I think it isn't until college where you can start to be less defensive about critique and really be able to absorb it. Because I think high school, we're still so... Like, oh, that's, I, that's the way I do it. You guys had art. Like, I, because I went to a Baptist school, I didn't have art class at all. The last, oh. the only time I had art class was in second grade. That was the last time because I was going to public school. But after that, all my Baptist schools I went to, none of them had art classes. And then I was homeschooled, and we really didn't do much art there either. Well, art is the craft of the devil. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know. It's, I wish I had art class, but granted, now I'm hearing that. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, look how much I love art now. Oh, yeah. No, I think I definitely am more of an artistic-minded person. I just never really... I did piano, though, so I feel like that was yeah. my outlet. So. I was like, musically. At least I do music. That's crazy, though, middle school teachers. <laughs> they were intense, Kandor. Okay, she even... Kandor says, even she meant... Even she never mentioned the time of day, so I said no and got my worst grade ever in art, a C. Uh. Oh, Kandor. That sucks, because she didn't really tell you the specifics. I mean, I have straight up gotten an F before in art. But yeah, you're told to paint a scenery with trees, so you, if your favorite time of day is, like, dawn, why would that be? <laughs> tell you these teachers sometimes. <laughs> Anna... Anna says, the best advice I had from a teacher was to stop drawing what I think I see and actually draw what I see. Hmm. 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 I feel like I've gotten so much good advice over the years, it'd be hard for me to pick, like, a favorite. I like that, though. Okay. I feel like that's a deeper, it has a deeper meaning than just surface level even, too. As advice, teacher is draw what, so drawing what I think I see and actually draw what I see. Speak. I guess the only adverse reaction I have to that is um, just remember the I guess a piece I was told from Sean Andrew Murray was just remember you're an artist, not a camera. So if I wanted to uh, see a realistic photo or like study of this, I would just take a photo. But if I want to see in your head and see what you're seeing from looking at the scenery, that's what makes you an artist. Um, I feel like Maybe a more of a philosophical level? I hate using that word. I was going to say, I think that's I think less literal. Yeah, because you can sometimes be try to interpret things or say things in a way that we think we're seeing it, but we don't admit how we actually are, what it actually is, I guess. Um, Eric Ziva says, as far as being defiant towards a teacher, there's perhaps also a rumored problem with the fact that it can be hard to trust our teachers. Because some of them... Are really just up their own rear. <laughs> well, what's funny is even with, uh, I won't name this person, but there was someone that was very critical of my work always, and like nothing was ever good, and they would always just make it seem like it was derivative of something else. And I realized that they would get me so upset, I kind of had the Sean syndrome where I worked out of bitterness 
and I want to just prove them wrong and like shove it in their face. <laughs> so sometimes the people that we see as adversaries in our life can actually be the best motivators. And sometimes we need the balance of those people kind of like we need our supporters. Because if we only had supporters, I think our work would get boring. If we only had adversaries, our work would be catered to uh, them rather than yourself. I'm going to rush through some of these now, though, because we are very behind, and I just want to make sure everyone gets in, because then after this, we're doing the critiques. Yes. Um, All right, shoot so, it. So, yeah. Ella says, I'm my own worst critic to that degree that compliments just bounce off as kind of words people don't really mean. A teacher like in Whiplash would break me. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I think some people, I think everyone has different teaching styles, though, too, that work yeah. for them. And that's the hard part with, I think, classes sometimes is it, if it's one teacher teaching one certain way, that might work for some students, but other students it might not work for. And that's a whole different discussion, though, too. Jensen says, no, see, we're right, Jensen's replying to me asking how he's doing. So that's how far behind we are. Oh, right yeah, now. a little bit. Yeah, Jensen says, no worries, I'm doing well. I'm in between jobs right now, and that did cause some anxiety, but then Corona happened, and I decided just to spend time working on fundamentals. Oh, good job. <laughs> Love and lockdown. That's good. Making the best out of it. I think yeah, that's good job. I think that's the best way to get through this all. Kendra says, I love how light, how you light up when you talk about the six foot drawing. <laughs> just, I mean, I worked on it before the stream started. I'm just, I'm really enjoying it right oh, now. Oh, yeah. Well, I feel like having that room to yourself up there, you get the music going. You're kind of in a, you're in like the ocean, basically, when you're up there. Yeah, now like I feel like you go out, We have just this empty room upstairs. And I, we put the drawing in there for, I forgot what reason. I think because we were just moving things around. Oh, and here we were moving things around. Yeah. And I was like, well, we need somewhere to put this. Anyways, I started drawing in there. And it's just, when I enter that room, I'm entering a different world for an hour. I get to be in this underwater utopia. And that's all I think about for that hour. So it's just been really, it's super enjoyable right now. We are hitting the five minute mark, just so everyone knows. All right, I'm going to so work I'm on gonna final keep details. going through comments. All right, um, yeah, go through. Candor, I may not. Candor says, I may or may not be eating chips right now. I feel that, Candor, at 5.30 a.m., I still feel that. I totally did an all-nighter <laughs> the other day, too, and I did chips. You did not do an all-nighter, Mr. Embellisher. No, I did, like, a couple weeks ago. Remember my all-nighter? All-nighters all are where you you don't fall asleep during the day. I then. make it till 6. <laughs> That's an all-nighter. It's <laughs> not an all-nighter. Tim. <laughs> not embellishing. <laughs> That's Dawson. a straight-up lie. <laughs> Next comment, we have a lot of these comments to catch up on. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. Dawson Walker says, Armillary spheres are so beautiful. I've got a couple armillary sphere rings. Oh, yeah, like the thing you have, I think. Is that an armillary? Yeah. Oh, is that what that is? I never knew what it was called. Um, the more you know. Dawson Walker says, I've got more jokes. Keep them close and handy. <laughs> Lower says, honestly, I thought I was already subscribed and watching your channel on Instagram for a while. Well, thank you for subscribing, though, Lower. Yeah, thank you, thank you. <laughs> and thanks for, yeah, for having me on Instagram. Um, Fem says, we can hand those corny jokes to you on a platter. <laughs> yeah, you guys are good at it. Keep them coming. Those dad jokes, though. Victor says, I believe I'm good at drawing and I like to see my final piece finish, but I don't always enjoy the process if that's too long. Oof. So my friend Pete would say that that's a problem. Because if you don't enjoy the process, you're not going to enjoy the life of an artist. Just something to think about. Maybe you're just in a weird funk right now. Well, do you think sometimes if you're maybe pushing yourself in a technical level you're not ready for, maybe that's where you could start not enjoying the process because you're giving yourself maybe something that's not in your range yet? Yeah. Like maybe that could be... I still think it's good to do that, though. Probably. Maybe if you're doing it too much, though, even... Yeah, you might be overstraining where you're just really not enjoying what you're creating and it's making you not enjoy the work you're doing at all. But to be an artist, I mean, Pete always says this, to be an artist, you have to enjoy the process or else you're not going to enjoy being an artist. <laughs> Renee's Art Studio says your timer just went down one minute, then up 30 seconds. What? I, Did it really? I mean, it seems like okay over here, but maybe that's why it's blinking. It could just be... OBS not connecting with the thing well. Yeah, I don't know. What's That's so on. well. Maybe we got some extra seconds in this guy, so <laughs> we'll utilize it. Yeah, use them well. Um, Fidgety says, "Would it be okay to use Josh's hand reference from a piece of my own outside the follow along?" Yes, oh, please of use course. That. Yeah, take Josh. Oops, I got my hair in there again. Uh, take Josh in it so you can see what they turn into on Discord. Yeah, this is fun. I don't get 
this is like everyone's drawing my hands so i find that really cool i appreciate everyone right now thank <laughs> you <laughs> fem is oh, fem says is fem says it's why am i struggling fem says is always happy to lend a hand on these streams thank you simon for subscribing oh thank you oh there's one little ding <laughs> prepare for the ding everyone a little ding Almost oh, like where you get the tap, so the tap is like the subscriber, but then the ring is the member. Oh, I could do that. I could <laughs> click with my nails. <laughs> Tossin says, I apologize to anyone I'm annoying. No. No, not, not at all. Anyone. Yeah. Actually, you're helping because I like having the comments help us have conversation. Um, I'm an introvert, and I call them quite a bit. My extrovert friends, it's a way outside my comfort zone, but it <laughs> seems to help them a bit. Yeah, yeah, that's really important. That's good that you're doing that, Dawson, because I know... Sometimes we forget about them. Like they, they need people around. That's how they get their energy and their. That's what gives them happiness is being around people. So make sure Man, to reach out. Uh, do you do that with any friends? Because I kind of do that with Sean. Because I know he's a oh, talker. Yeah. No, I do. I reach out to. Well, obviously, like Autumn. I think Autumn's more introverted. Oh, yeah. But I still try to hang out with her a lot right now. And then Hannah and I have been texting. So yeah, I've been reaching out to my friends. Um, as often as I can. Uh, Kendra says, I will teach you how to tell stories. People say I am good at it, and they, am, and they feel almost like it is a fairy tale. Nighttime story can be good, doesn't have to. <laughs> yeah, I could use some tips. <laughs> Fem says, um, introverted, but I like hanging out with people I trust. And my dad is just like, it's so easy for you because you were always alone in your room before, but I do miss going to my internship. Yeah, I think for me too, it's just going to the store. Like I love, I like going to the store and just browsing and looking at everything, and I can't do that right now. Um, oh, 30 seconds, everyone. Yeah, 30 seconds. Actually, I feel <laughs> Kendra says, the graphite talked, talk reminded me, did you ever find that eraser? Were you missing it? Tim's always missing erasers, so <laughs> nothing new. I mean, probably not. <laughs> I'm always losing them. Oh, yeah, I think I'm done. Five, four, three... Two, one. Oh, yeah. So did. here is mine. You can see sometimes the graphite gets reflected by the light. Eventually I'll fix it. Um, but here are my hands that I did. Mm. I can already tell some of my fingers are a little longer on the left hand. I should have focused on that a little bit more in the fundamentals. I think when I do live streams, because <coughs> I'm looking at it at such an angle, I can't look at it straight down. Sometimes I ha I should really adjust it. I should like push it, but uh, that would be my main critique on myself right now. And then some of the edges could be cleaned up. But for the most part, I'm actually pretty proud of how this turned out. Specifically, the wrist here, how it has a mid tone value, and you can tell that it's bent. And the top of the palm, I really like. So yeah, there's elements I like about it. Mm. So if you want to post yours in the Discord now. And then, as we're doing that, Josh, if you want to announce the winner of the, oh, yes. the giveaway. Just cool to see my hands. <laughs> oh, I love how you got the little dent. Oh, yeah. I mean, a lot of this kind of stuff is a challenge in how you see the world. And I think I've always had an affinity for looking at an object and then drawing it exactly as it is. But now I've been pulling into like reverse contrast and all that kind of stuff. Do you want me just to name it, or should I kind of like put their Instagram yes, so, on the wait, camera? Yeah, so wait, let me see who won. Actually, there's wait, what's their name? name? Oh, the top. Okay. Yeah. So the winner, if you are here, I mean, there's a lot of entries, so who knows? But I will post it on my Instagram later tonight. The winner is Soul Ascending. Yeah. <laughs> so we are gonna message them. Uh, what are, do they have? Their real name? Um. No. No. So we will find out who this is, and you will be receiving the Dark Fairy illustration. And I will be sending that out, or Josh will be sending this out, I will be doing that, either yes. tomorrow or next week. But either way, you will be receiving it. Or probably next week, because we need our address. Congratulations. 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 So Congratulations. You get a few, or is my... Some more asteroids? Yeah, you get some asteroids from me. Oh, yeah. So then I'm going to look up... Actually, no, we're gonna give her the golden fridge. We are gonna start looking at the Discord submission. So if you wanna continue posting on there, I'm gonna get it all set up. I might have to, Do you want to move switch with you. Or... 
Just split So spots here's spots. what we're going to do. I think we're going to swap spots. Okay. So Actually, I can turn this. Do, do, do. Moving things around. <laughs> Dylan, I rate we should get an Astrid stream. Completely agree. <laughs> <laughs> Just purely focus on Astrid the whole time. Honestly, I feel like the um no, this is more ideas. I don't want to throw things out there. But I could just do what? like little um what if we became a vlogging couple? Like I could do vlogging at the sign. You can just do I life. That's too much for me. Life with Tim and for me. Life with Team and Schwa. Alright, so we're gonna move oh, things around. Myself. Oh my goodness. Here, wait, let me see the oh. Oh, yeah. so it turns oh my hair out. looks so weird. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do that. Okay. A lovely hand poses Tijel. Very nice. The last one's a little threatening, but all the other ones look great. Okay, right. so first I'm going to show a lot of them on the stream. And then I'm going to pull so, up Photoshop. Is okay, that okay, you move that. that. Okay, okay, I just yeah. don't want to send my laptop down. Alright, you know what? I'm going to move this giant board out of here so I can pull my Cintiq closer. Could you give me a mouse pad, though? Yes. Ooh, look at these great little warm-ups. Thank you, thank you. That was from, I think those were Candors. Very nice. <laughs> I can tell, well, warm-ups I won't critique that much. I just want to take a browse through. Very light, Eric. Very light pencils. I think in warm up you can go a little darker. Okay. Ooh. Ooh, yeah, those are, I see it. The far right one on that one I really like. Ah, so we got someone breaking it down in the box. But even with these, I would look at like that pinky is way too fat. <laughs> uh, but thankfully, with warm-ups, you don't have to care too much. Okay, are these the... <laughs> this is, I'm too exhausted there. Mm. Okay. Ooh. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. No, they were doing... Oh, they were doing the progress. Progress. Okay. Yeah, oh, I like that. Cool. Yeah. So immediately, I can tell right away, though, this wrist is... Even though Josh does have really small wrists, it, they're too small here. I would thicken them up, especially when it's put next to the other one. Or make the hand smaller. But I really like how you did the finger placements on the right hand. Ooh. I can definitely tell you put more focus on this hand. I like how you did the wrist bump. That's a really good one there. I think uh, for you, like knowing where to shade seemed to be kind of a challenge. And knowing, oh, am I way off camera? Oh, no, I'm on camera. No, you're good, yeah. I think pushing yourself to be confident where you're laying the values and just running with it. Eventually, even with my own, I I kind of ad lib some of where the contrast was because you learn as you do more of these. When objects overlap, you can either do it very realistically or you can do it in a way that complements the overall composition. And I, I usually go for the latter. But with yours, when you don't have much values at all, it, it reads more as line art. But which is fine because I can tell you're focusing on the proportions and there's some really good stuff happening here. I think my challenge to you would be next time pushing those values in and going darker in certain areas. And if you want to, the thing that really helps me drawing hands, uh, at least when I start off, is your fingers are ever overlapping the palm area. I would make the fingers a little darker and the palm a little lighter. That way you still get that contrast and you have uh, differentiating uh, values butting up right against each other. Ooh, what is this? Max, I can do also working on my daily job. Look at you sneaking that in. Uh, yeah, I like how you did a lot of the wrinkles here. You definitely were able to see, especially around the knuckles. I think the thickness of the fingers, especially the pinky, is just a little off. The overall proportions seem pretty good. Hmm. And then I think my next challenge to you would be similar to the last one, would be putting more values within the hand. Because I can tell a lot of these seem very light in the hand. 
where it's okay to push some of the values within the hand as well. And if you really want that background to be that dark, that's kind of giving you permission to add mid-tones throughout the hand without it losing the um, form and the subject matter. Because if your background was super dark and then the values you have in your hand are super dark, that's when it can get lost. But that can also create a really pretty end result too. I mean, you see the masters do it where forms will just bleed into the shadow background area and you can do it in a really cool way. Okay, this one is Hex. I personally feel like I butchered the bottom hand. <laughs> oh, you didn't have an eraser? Yeah, that can make it a little tougher. Ooh. Extra challenging, though. I think for you, I would focus on... There's a few things here. It definitely proportions, especially with this right hand. The thumb is very thick. Very thick thumb. Um, and a lot of these... Something to look at is usually with fingers and knuckles. The knuckle in the middle is usually pretty pronounced, but the one that connects where the fingertip is usually isn't that pronounced. But on yours, each finger feels like it has a very big dip, where usually it's more of a straight line with like a little, the, the hintest of um, hills on the top of the, the knuckle. But normally it's this knuckle that you're gonna see more of. So don't over accentuate unless if it is intentional. And I think even with like the webbing, I think you missed, you know what, this one I'm gonna bring into Photoshop because there's my tool. Oh, it's got to verify my Photoshop account first. Uh, but I definitely see some webbing issues where all the fingers feel like they connect at the same point, but you got to remember there's a little, little hill, little valley in between each finger, and that's where the webbing is. Come on, Photoshop. And then even the, oh, is it in? Okay, so I'm gonna copy this. So for this hand, can I see the reference image in? Oh wait, you don't have that power. I don't, yeah. <laughs> I do not have the mouse. So if I pull this over here, let's move this side by side. So you can see how before, See how on yours, there's no webbing, there's no... It looks like you're pushing the knuckle way further out than it is. So in here, the knuckle is actually more eyes flat on the hand, and then the pinky itself, it kind of turns into this. So then you can push the shadow here. And sometimes this is why I like working digitally more on streams, because I feel like it's easier for me to show things quickly and how to edit things quickly. And obviously the liquify tool is a huge lifesaver. But then here I would I wouldn't make these as pronounced. I would push for a more accurate representation from the actual the photo. And then here, kind of like what I was saying to the people before, it's okay to push the values on like these knuckles. And I am glad that a lot of you did work traditionally because I, I think you learn a lot more working traditionally because digitally there are so many shortcuts. But uh, sometimes the hindrance of working with traditionally is it's hard to edit things quickly. And especially with showing values, um, you have to like rent, you know, push them all in where on digital you can just make the brush size bigger. So the other thing I had a big issue with that I want to show you is with the proportion of the wrist it is way out here. And I want you to see how much you were constrained, like forcing it to be way in, when really the hand was way out here. You can see how already it's giving more uh, weight to the overall hand. Move it a little lighter here. So you can see before and after how you were pushing it way too close. So I think for you, I would just keep working on uh, analyzing proportions and where shapes are in relation to one another. I guess another really good uh, way to do this is see on how in the reference image, there's this kind of hill valley in between the hand where it overlays the arm. When I am looking at a drawing, and the reason I was always called a photocopy machine is because oftentimes I'm looking at those shapes and trying to recreate those more than I'm actually trying to recreate the actual subject matter because if you create the shapes around the subject matter eventually you're going to create the, the shapes that they're outlining 
So you can see how, because I'm focusing on that little triangle hill, all of a sudden the shape feels uh, better to the overall hand. And then you start to do that everywhere, even like, see how it's a little more angled here, and then that arm goes this way. So I would just keep focusing on shape relations with one another, and keep going from there. Um, Ella said I would say focus on more on bigger shapes and simplify. They're getting caught up in details. It's a very common mistake, I'd say. Yep. Yep. Like you're you're doing the wrinkles, but even in the reference image, you see how these wrinkles don't even really exist. Here, let me choose a color. Oh, was it way over there? Hmm. Like, oh. These wrinkles don't even really exist, or that one does a little bit, but that one doesn't even really exist in the reference photo as much because of the way it's bent. The camera didn't pick it up as much. So we want to add details that we know are there, but sometimes when drawing from life, you have to either simplify or make things implied. And I agree with the statement that oftentimes we focus too much on details before looking at the shapes and breaking it down to the simpler forms first. So I always say try to create a, a solid foundation first, that way you can build upon it. Hey, this one's pretty good. This is this is Vic. Yeah, I think you you definitely went for pushing a lot of the values, which I appreciate, and a lot of your proportions are pretty much there. Just probably a little editing here and there. I think my next challenge for you would be to uh, clean up some of the values. But this challenge was a little harder because of how dynamic the lighting was in the photo. So honestly, you did a great job with what we were given. This is another instance where I would still have some of the shape proportions with itself. So here, you can see how the dip in between the pinky and the ring finger is a little larger. And I think for you, I'm going to nitpick a little more just because it seems like you kind of grasped a good chunk of what uh, the stream was about and getting the proportions. So I think for you, it's just going to be then looking at little adjustments that you can start making on your, your pieces. And even with my own, I know that some of my proportions on the hand in front were a little longer, and I, I want to edit those down. So I'm going to kind of share the same thing with you. Where like this finger here, in the reference, it's actually pointed down into the palm, where on yours, it's pointed more up. So I would just take it and push it into the palm more, so that the angle on the top is actually uh, matching the one in the reference. And a lot of this would just be, you know, like I said, little edits. But you know what? One big one that I'm really noticing is the thumb is too high up. The thumb should be actually a little lower. And then even this thumb, it angles down, and it's a bit bigger than the one that you drew. Kind of like that. So yeah, just know with yours, I think you did a, a pretty great job with proportions and values. I think for you, just now doing the little edits uh, throughout. Oh, Luna, look at you doing digital. <laughs> uh, so kind of the same critique as before. I think there's just editing that needs to go on throughout. I do like, you captured, you're one of the few that did this. And I didn't see it till near the end. And I, I was like, oh, I almost forgot that one part. This, there's a shadow right here. There's like a harsh shadow in the reference, and you can see it. So I'm glad that you were able to capture that. And I like that you have a mid-tone butting up against a dark tone. It's not just, you know, dark tone but butting up against a light tone. You saw the image and saw that it really was a dark against a mid. I think for you, my biggest critique is definitely the way that you draw veins. It, does, it feels too lined out. It feels pretty good here, but then it feels very cartoony here. And then I would say just for your edges, I can tell you're doing like the, you know, this type of way of edging, which it's not the worst. I kind of do something similar. But then when you're near the end, I would just go in and clean it up. So either, uh, you know, grab your brush and just spend some time going through the edge. And with digital, the thing that I've always liked about digital that's harder for me to do traditionally is leaving the edge blank, not having a as defined of a, a line art edge. So you can have it be softer and push some of these lighter values. 
And like this vein, I think, is way too uh, dramatic. <laughs> Gonna simplify that. So I think a way that you could push out your veins is literally grab a slightly lighter value. I'm doing it like, ooh, that's a bit dark, too light though. Like that, where it's more subtle, and then you can push a little bit of the darker shadow. But I wouldn't push too much, otherwise it can look uh, cartoony. And if you did want like a solid line art edge, I guess you could bring the black back. You can see before and after, just like subtle little changes. I love the nails. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very pointy. <laughs> I think uh, the one thing I would encourage you to do with the nails is add in just a, a little bit of a highlight. So you can see on how with Josh's, they definitely have a reflective surface to them. So there's a pretty strong highlight on this pinky. And then the top of his fingernails are the whiter part. So I would have just accentuated that a little bit more, almost like a, what are those called, a French manicure, and uh, go from there. But I like that you're not afraid to work with darks, because usually I'm always telling ours the opposite. Oh, look at this one. Oh, this one's pretty great. I think my critique for this one would be, let's see here. Honestly, this one's pretty great. I think maybe just even pushing your darker is just even a little more dark if you want. Not necessarily you have to. I think maybe I see some proportion issues, but like I'm this is more nitpicking at this point. I would say the thumb is a little smaller, especially when you see the reference side by side. It should be pushed almost to like here. And then the wrist should come in there. Oh, and they got the highlight underneath the pointer finger as well. Uh, right there. Right? The the one highlight that you're saying. Oh, a little bit, yeah. Them. Where there's like the sharper line and then it's a lighter value. Yeah. I think now that I'm really looking at the fingers feel a little too thin. Do you see it on this one? Where this one should be a little thicker. And then, I really like this one. I was going to say, yeah. I think this one just little edits throughout. Because even with uh, this top hand, you can see how your, well, your hand, this finger almost went straight up. Where you can see in the reference, it's kind of leaning to the side a bit more. And then even this nail feels really small. There, There's just like a few proportion critiques, but I agree with Josh. I think that one's pretty great. Jim to the hum. Uh, this one's pretty fun. I think uh, my my challenge for you would be doing what Cynics does and adding more little straight lines throughout because everything feels very curvy, which I definitely enjoy a curvy drawing as well. But if you look at the reference and then look at yours, I think looking at areas where we can enhance uh, values. So like on the back of this finger, I feel like a lot of you guys... Um, went a little lighter here, but I can tell you're, you're pretty good at line art, honestly. This is pretty great. And your proportions are, are pretty good. I think same thing like the last one, the thumb should be moved a little bit more over, and I think the wrist should be moved over as well. But for your values, which is going to be my bigger challenge for you, because I can tell you'll, you could get proportions if you either were given more time or you know gave it a, a deeper look, but I would look at pushing some of these darker values and then doing the same on this hand. You can see you're kind of doing it where the fingers are pushing into the palm. So I just want more of that. And if it helps you, I would even push some of the backdrop to be darker, just so you can get more of that contrast between uh, values that you're adding in and then the background, which is very dark. So that way it can help separate the forms out more. So yeah. Oh, how many do we have? One, two, I want to make sure that I can get through all these. Okay, yeah, we're good. Oh, wait. Noah Ruiz, thank you oh, very well, much. Thank you, thank you for subscribing. <laughs> I don't have the bell near me, but ding, ding, oh, ding. Oh, you're right. I'll give you the, I'll give oh, you the power thank back. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> we're just, oh, oh, I did it by itself, but. <laughs> Ooh, okay, this one's from Felix. Oh, this one's fun. I think I can already tell the, the critique that I'm giving out that will be consistent will be like little editing throughout. 
I think with yours, I, I like that you push a lot of the values. I think the wrist should just be a touch thicker. Here you can see how the finger, like literally little edits can make a big difference in the end result. And even with this. Now the thing that I really like that I'm gonna point out is you used a very, it was like a 25% value underneath the right hand and this looks really good because I can tell it's not quite the, the shadow area that you have in the background. And it's creating this, this mid uh, value shadow where I can still see the details, but it doesn't just mask it with being really dark. So very good job on that. Um, these were very tricky hands to do because a lot of them are either like, here's a good example where you could have put more of the stress lines in the palm, the, the patty fatty part of the palm, and show more of the stress lines of the finger kind of pushing into it. And then since I can tell you're, you're pretty comfortable with laying down values, I would push this thumb to be much darker. Kind of like in the reference, you see how it's like really a contrasty area. And then with that wrinkle, that's very dark there. I can tell though you're you're really you're really good at picking up the value details. So then I think my challenge to you would be pushing like 50 to 75% darker values just in the areas that you want. Doesn't mean the whole drawing has to be dark, but just in those areas that matter and doing minor proportion edits. Ooh, yeah, see Zad's not afraid to work dark. <laughs> So I can tell you either used a finger or a blending stump, and I think that's why my high school teacher was always on top of me for her using or not using one, because sometimes it can look a little blurry or a little smudgy, and that's okay, because that can be cleaned up on top after it's done. But there are some areas that feel too smooth, um, where I think there should be a little more texture. So, I mean, right off the gate, I can, I want to applaud you for going dark because I think that's something a lot of artists are afraid to do. But I can, or not even but, I think that's a good job, so keep working with that. I think when I'm looking at proportions, I think there are some uh, things that are too small. And some of the fingers look pretty good. Like this middle finger looks pretty good, but it still should be a bit thicker. But I think that whenever one finger looks off or like disproportionate, I think it throws the entire hand off. So when you're doing the foundation, just a reminder guys, like always make sure that the proportions feel pretty good before getting into detailing, because now editing this might be kind of a chore, where if it's in the beginning stages, it's not that bad. I like that you really captured the darkness on the side of the thumb, so good job there. I think once again, looking at the shape relation, see how this finger kind of points, or leans, it's like leaning power, tower of Pisa a little to the left. Um, I think if you had more time, I think your darkness would have filled around here, which would have made your pinky stand out more. And then this wrist, I feel like it's kind of lost in its form. I think the thing that you could do is literally pull some of the lighter value here, and you can see how immediately that pulls it up, rather than it just being a gradation like that. If you add more of that lighter value to tell where the top of the palm is, or the top of the hand, it uh, will read better. So good job. <laughs> I ran out of ideas in what I was doing and went silly. <laughs> oh! Turned into a werewolf. <laughs> I love this. And I got the little crescent moon tattoo. I mean, Josh is definitely recorded, right? I love it. This is fun. <laughs> I think obviously working maybe a little bigger may have helped, but not bad. Not bad. Okay, Jackie, you are an artist that was very similar to the one I was in high school. So I like that I can tell near the end you probably started going dark, but you, were, you draw very light, and I have a pretty good impression that you might draw a little slower. That's totally okay, because I draw slow, and I understand, and sometimes it takes a while. Don't be afraid of this finger here. I know that was kind of an awkward one, but your proportions are pretty great, I must say. Your fingers feel fleshed out. I think everything but this thumb, this thumb feels a little weird to me. Let me see the original. Yeah, I feel like people, you, you guys were not having fun with this thumb as a collective. Sometimes when the thumb is hyperextended like that, it looks really strange. So I, I know why this might have been more of a, a problem area. But yeah, this feels pretty great. I like that you were focusing on the shadows underneath the finger, so it feels like there's overlapping. 
I think my challenge to you is just keep uh, working on your values and try to work a little faster. And it's okay for warm-ups or studies like these, even if they feel a little more rushed, as long as you're getting um, the academic learning that I think I want to push you in of, how do I draw values? How do I lay them down? How do I lay down things more efficiently? So right now I can tell you're going very slow. And it wasn't until my teacher kind of pushed me to draw faster and I was doing these life drawing sessions of 15, 20 minutes where you, know, you have to compromise on detail uh, to focus on blocking things out. So I think my challenge for you is to block out lights and shadows more. <laughs> Rendering is my mortal enemy. Also, don't know how to make things look like touching or pressing, like that one finger, yes, the thumb was hard, lol. <laughs> uh, so yours, you definitely like accentuating uh, the forms, which is, you know, this is a cool way of drawing, and you see this a lot with uh, traditional studies of way of drawing form, where you kind of, you literally do a shape around the shadow and then fill it in as a solid. So I think with yours though, the thumb, actually I wouldn't even say the thumb was that bad. I think your wrist should have been pushed over a bit more. Um, like right there. But I think your fingers are pretty good. I think there's just a little bit of wobbliness between them. But I think overall you captured it for the most part. I would just say make them a little thicker than you represented them. I think the pinky is actually perfect proportion. But I think these should be a little thicker. Um, yeah, I mean, this way of blocking out can be very helpful in seeing shadow, so I'm not going to critique you so much on that. I think my, my push for you would be, if the, these were the secondary details, blocking out the shadows, I think now looking at where some of it blends in, so like on the hand here, it has more of a gradation going around the finger rather than it being like a sharp, this is where the shadow starts and the light begins. And I actually don't think you did a bad job at where it's pushing into the palm. I know you said that that was kind of a struggle, but I feel like you did a, a decent job. I think the proportions on this hand definitely should be a bit wider. Uh, but other than that, I think you did a pretty good job. But I, I would recommend putting more detail and focus on uh, the shadow, where the shadow meets the light. Because you do a good job blocking out the shadows, which is, you know, very academic. But I think then getting into that next stage of where it smooths slightly into one another, where the shadow and light isn't just hard edge. Um, yeah. All right, this one is Drea. Finger foreshortening will be the death of me. <laughs> I, I don't think you did a bad job with the finger foreshortening, honestly. I think when I look at yours, immediately I can tell that this almost looks like hair to me. I think uh, the way that you're shading that area kind of implies hair. It almost looks like um, an animal, or like uh, someone turning into a werewolf. So for yours, I would focus on either softening out that rendering or adding slightly darker values to the rest of here. So even with as I'm going through the hand, you have a very white top of the hand. I think for the challenge for you specifically, we'll be focusing on where to lay in some darker values. So definitely these two fingers. Those two fingers I specifically wanted, or I wanted fingers to be in shadow, so when I took the reference photo of Josh, I tried to move him around so that some of the fingers wouldn't be getting all the light source. Um, I think the smudging, once again, not my favorite technique, but uh, I like that you pushed the background value to be darker, but I think having it be either pushed further out and then on the actual part where you're drawing within the hand, the, the hand value feels so close to the background value where this should be lighter. So I think, I think my challenge for you is focusing on how uh, values differentiate from one another and where it's meant to be darker, I would go go dark, but then don't force shadows to be darker than they need to be, unless if you're doing it for like a style uh, um, way of rendering. And then also the area under the finger, it really isn't that, sh uh, there isn't that much shadow right near the palm side, so this would be more light, and then underneath the finger is where you get more shadow. Uh, 
Uh, there's some bounce lighting that's kind of fun here, but I think overall I would clean up some of the values. And then just focus a little bit more, like even these lines on the back of the hand. I definitely know that they imply the, the bones of the fingers, but this one, the reference image, doesn't even exist. So I feel like this is one of those that we add because we think we have to. And then this one's far too dark. So instead, I would focus on, if you really have, want to have a very accentuated uh, bone structure, I would push where the knuckle is right on below the fingers. I would push that more, as you kind of see in the image, especially with that one. And then the webbing here, I think, should be pushed more with this lighter value. And then you can see how the bone structure is like here. That's where you can accentuate it. Because that's where it more is in the reference. So don't push it in the middle of the hand just because we think that's where they go. Sometimes when the, the reference doesn't have that, we sometimes add it because we are like, oh yeah, that's where I know there will be that bone. So yeah, that would be my advice for you. Good job, everyone. I'm surprised how many people were here today. <laughs> the most lovely Wednesday afternoon. Oh, this is fun. Yeah. So this has a very like a comic booky cross cross hatching style of rendering, <laughs> Sim similar to the one before last one where you block out the shadows and then you just fill it in with a solid color. This can work really well, especially with comic books. It does sometimes give off a metallic feel, so sometimes this could feel like the surface is liquid metal. But I think this works well for your style. I think my critiques for you... Um, honestly, you do some things that I, I really like. I like how the hand fades into the shadow here, as it does in the reference image. This definitely has a very graphic novel type feel to me, because even with like the bounce light on this finger here, it's very light. It's like a highlight. Where in the reference, it's not nearly that bright. But you did a really good job at, I mean, this, there's a lot of shadows going on. You did a good job at capturing them. I think my only critique, and this is more on like a realism style, so you can totally blow this one off if that's not your intention. But this area, I would have put more in shadow just to push a little bit of different uh, values because right now see how it's all kind of the same and with like areas of you know blocked out shadow but having more mid-tones can probably push larger areas or even under this hand if we melt those together you see how all of a sudden it kind of reads better as well when you have more uh, first shapes of shadows because you're, you're working a lot on the second and the tertiary shadows but I think pull back and then squint at it and then look at the reference image, and you can see how if you simplify some of the shadows, it can create a more, let me do it back and forth. See, before, and then blocking out the shadows after. You know, you, you, it's easier to read. I don't know what would your notes say. <laughs> no time for background. <laughs> oh, someone worked in color. Look at that. Ooh. Okay, right, this one's kind of fun because this is the easiest to critique because literally it's just more time and then edging. So something that I learned when I was in college, and this might be a fun thing for you to try out, is when you get to the point of this stage, this is going to be really fun. It's called edging. So look at the hand, let's say the left side of Josh's left hand. Grab that lighter color, because I don't have this open in Photoshop, and literally we're going to go through, actually I'm going to do it on a new layer so I can do it before and after. and bleed it into this hand. Oh, why is my brush setting all weird? Hold on. Oh no, that's right. Am I pushing down too hard? Oh, there we go. I don't know why I was doing that. So as I'm pushing this lighter value against, I mean, even in here between these two fingers, I think my biggest critique for you is going to be pushing values up against each other, everything feels too fluid from one to the next, where you're actually hurting the overall image because then everything feels too, um, as my teachers would say, runny. It looks like things are just running into one another and there's no separations of form. 
here, I mean, even though this finger should be a little thicker, let me blend this in a little bit more before I'm like, yeah, this looks this is the way you're supposed to do it, and it still looks crappy. Because literally, you can start doing this everywhere, because I can tell you don't like using line art anyways, or you're trying to cover it up, or even on like this side of the hand. See how this is a little messy? All you have to do is create a nice, clean edge, and it just really separates the forms and creates a nice, balanced, clean look. Let me do one more area so you can kind of see it, like on the top of this finger. And if there's an area that you feel got pushed out too much, you really need to grab a darker color and then edge it the other way. So this would be reverse edging. Okay, so you can see before and after how the four kind of just bled into the background and it was a little messy. And then here, it'd be really easy then to push like the edge of the knuckle and blending that all together but having such a light area there separates the background from the subject matter. So I would keep pushing that kind of stuff everywhere and be totally okay having a light area but up right against a dark area. I'm trying to think if there's one more area that would be a good example. Oh, like the top of this hand. You kind of did it here, but then I would continue that um, and kind of see like you see how it gets really dark in between these where in reality you can have it be I mean there's even some bounce light coming from that finger like that and then there's that line here to bleed it down so anyways I would focus on doing a lot of butting up of uh, values right next to each other to separate form right, how many more do we got one two three four five Woof. Okay, I'll try to go a little faster with these. Um, I think for you, Rad, I ran out of time, really struggled with the entire left hand. I think, yeah, time was an issue. I can see you're battling it. Kind of like the advice I gave before, I would focus on forcing yourself to work faster, even if you get kind of weird results. I think forcing yourself to look at forms and simplify things first before you get into the detailing, because I think you might be similar to the type of artist I am where we like detailing. We like adding those finer details. But you gotta make sure you're working on a good foundation. So that'd be my critique for you. Aqua Mayhem. Oh yeah, these are fun. I think the similar critique to the one that did the graphic style, where it all feels a little um, when you like squint at it, 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 there's too much noise. I think to simplify it with some larger shapes of value can help simplify it so it's easier to read from far away. Like the easiest thing is behind the two knuckles having a darker value there to really help the form out. This one's from Exo Ninja J. So this one is very similar to the one where they you're focusing too much on the details and not enough on the form because the proportions feel, actually they don't feel that bad. I do feel like you did get a good job for how simplified they feel in a lot of ways, but you did a good job with some of that. I think the, I mean, the middle finger looks a little broken on the left hand, but I know that was a difficult pose because it was pushing into the palm. I think my critique for you is focusing on uh, adding values because I can see that the line art's not bad, but s similar to the one that we just uh, talked about, where I think having a darker value here, you know what, let me pull this up again so you can see the difference before and after. Having just a nice darker value here, and some here, and then even on the palm then. So these are the, the first values that people are gonna read, and you want these to read well, or else the whole thing can be just hard to read as a whole. So like that, you can see before and after, we're starting to get some more shapes, so we, we'd st it's easier to differentiate where the light source is coming from. And to do Fatima. So I can tell you're 
you're trying to figure out where to push some of your dark edging and um, did you write anything? No, you didn't. I think for you, my challenge would be focus on mid-tones. Right now, you're so focused on what seems to be either a very light or a very dark. And it's okay to explore some of those mid-tones. So I can see you starting to do it with these two fingers. I would just keep pushing that direction. And I think for you, you just maybe needed more time because you're so focused on the edges that you weren't so much focusing on the um, values. And that's okay. Uh, sometimes I do that too, where I'm so focused on a line heavy drawing. But I, I would challenge you to focus on working more with mid-tones. Socks with Super Sawyer said still in progress. Oh, this is pretty. <laughs> Very lovely soft shading, but I think for you, I'd want to see where it goes. <laughs> Femme did an arm. Very beautiful. It kind of looks like an elephant to me right now. <laughs> I'm sure it'll look like an arm eventually. <laughs> uh, Larissa. Oh, you have the the thumbnail that I use for when people donate. Oh, yeah. It's my little spirited away <laughs> one. So I think for you, it's a lot of proportions. I think focusing more on blocking out the proportions first. But what I like about yours is you don't seem to have a problem with working with mid-tones. And then I think the other challenge I have for you is once you're done with laying out your mid-tones, go in with a dark, like a 3D, and just edge some of those darker areas and really push it. Because I like that you have a lot of mid-tones throughout. I think then pushing the dark darks would look really good on yours. But I think more than anything, I would look at proportions. Because this, this hand feels very small. Um, compared to the fingers. Then the fingers feel more accurate to the drawing than the actual hand and wrist do. Oh, okay, last one. Jensen! Oh, look at your power hands. So for Jensen, I can tell you have no problem working dark. <laughs> I think my critique to you is similar to the ones that I had before where I think your, your secondary knuckle has too much of a, a dip arch where it seems like it has a lot of um, this movement going on. You can see it here too. Where oftentimes our fingers, they have, or at least for the second part of the fingers, it's more straight than we often get a credit for. So the, a good fix for this would be like the middle finger pointing into the palm here. I would just angle that nail down so that it feels more close to the reference. And I, I like that you're accentuating it because that means that you're aware of the human form. But I think sometimes it's so accentuated, it, it almost pulls over a little bit into looking animated or like, um, like it was meant to be uh, cartoony a bit. So I think just simplifying them just ever so slightly can help you create fingers that feel uh, more realistic. So then even with, like, here's a good example of you have this dip here, but literally just by getting rid of that dip, it already will feel like a realistic uh, finger. And now I think there's some issues I have with some of the, the veining and uh, this palm section. I think this thumb is looking really, really big. So we're going to push this up quite a chunk then pushing this palm out more. And it's, it's totally okay having uh, this be much more lighter in value. So then keeping, so then even with like the pinching here, having some of that pinch of the skin, and then keeping these to be a bit lighter. Because I can tell you, you just like want to go dark. That's okay. I, I think I, I don't want this to be a critique on style because if that's the style that you have, I think I'm just giving a more of a fundamental um, critique here. But if I mean that's the way that you like to draw hands, I'm not going to be on your case for it, you know. It's like simplifying some of these forms again. Because sometimes having very subtle or nuanced um, position or shapes of hands, or you know, this definitely needs to be bigger. Can can show so much more than them purposely being more animated looking. Man, you have no problem going dark. I'm realizing how dark <laughs> some of these are. Which is usually the opposite critique I, I have to tell artists, so good for you for not being afraid of your dark values. All right, so now if I zoom out, you can see before and after where the hand feels a little wobbly throughout. And then by just cleaning it up and making some of the edges a bit smoother and a little more nuanced in their shapes, 
I think you can create a more realistic feeling hand. And then don't don't over accentuate veins if they don't need to be over accentuated. Because even with this arm here, I think by simplifying it, you can actually create a better look. Like this is so dark here. Once again, just simplifying it with a mid tone. Because I think my biggest challenge for you would be to explore your mid tones. I can tell you're very comfortable with very dark and very light. I think my challenge for you would be looking at your mid-tones and how to express them more. And also, like, here's another good wobbly part where there is some wobble in the reference, but since you, you wobbled it so much, it almost looks a bit cartoony. Grab that color. Hmm. And Dawson says, is it just mirrors this piece intense, but not in a bad way? No, it says the high contrast definitely makes it come across as very intense. Oh, this one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah Justin, you have a very intense way of approaching the way you're rendering it. But I think that's that's totally cool, though, because... It's like your style. And most people are afraid to go intense. I feel like that it's usually so soft, but I can tell you're you're so comfortable with it. But I think my, my critique would be editing it so it just feels a little more um, natural. So the last thing I'll do really quick, I'm just going to do a quick liquify just to show you how the palm just feels a little small to me. And obviously working traditionally, we don't have this luxury of just pulling up the liquify filter. But for the critique, let me just show you. And thank you guys so much for coming to this live stream. Like I said, we're going to have another one next Wednesday. It'll be on feet, and Josh will be once again joining me, helping mod out because I could not be doing all this alone. <laughs> and then this Friday we'll be doing a red Joker stream. So I will be drawing my next and final Joker card for my card deck. And I have all the lines ready on my iPad. We're and not just... going to model my feet next week. Ah, no, we'll do. Well, I'll do my feet. I'll take a picture. Because winter. <laughs> the feet are kind of neglected all winter. <laughs> oh, gross. They're being taken care of now, but it's going to take a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you can see before and after how by making the palm a little thicker, the hand feels a bit more lifelike. So before and after, it's just like a lot of subtle changes with working with mid-tones and making things a little less wobbly. Okay. That's all I got. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys so much for coming to this live stream. I didn't realize we were going to have that many to go over, but that means that there are a lot of people here, apparently. Thank you, everyone, for drawing my hands, too. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you learned something from this, but I also think it's really cool. Yeah, it was really fun. Yeah, seeing everyone's so, yeah. different interpretations, styles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we'll see you guys possibly on Friday. And if not, I just want to give one more shout-out to the person who won the 300K. We'll do, I'll do some kind of a post on my story tonight. Yes. And I'll be looking at the emojis for the contest that ends today. I think that's all I have. Oh, and my Kickstarter starts in two weeks. That's all I got. The emoji contest, yeah, that everyone can vote on it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. And be sure to vote with the fridge emoji. I think that was kind of lost in the rules, but we'll figure it out. Okay. <laughs> thank you guys so much for coming. Thank you, Josh, for helping out oh, today. Thank you. Thank and you. And have a good rest of your Wednesday, guys. Bye.